Hello everybody, I think I'm ready to start the stream. Welcome Dango, welcome Daddy for show. For show? Like for sure. Let's chat. So welcome to the bonus stream. We don't normally do things on Wednesdays, but here we are. So the goal for today is mostly just to give bonus content for PSO. But if you have any questions, let us know. So I see that you said you just started playing PSO Blue Burst also. Nice, nice. I'll have a discussion with Hellcleave. I'll think about if I want to do a guide during Easter. It depends on how tired I am. If I don't feel like playing PSO, but don't mind talking about PSO. But I think overall today, it is rare week. So expect a lot of the classic quests. So sorry for people looking for the oddball quests. Uh, we're going to be doing probably a majority of standard quests. Including probably some episode 4. Because I did forget to do that last time. Rommel are very hard right now. Nice, nice. Yeah, I don't want to offer to rush the first character, but definitely if you ever wanted assistance, let us know. I'm going to do a quick check to see what the beat is. Because I feel like I have been neglecting some episode 4 runs. Might be one of those scenarios where I just missed it again. The unfortunate thing of having long work hours. Holy, there's 55 more songs in this soundtrack? That woke me up a little. I'm gonna hit the gym right now, I'm gonna see if I could try and join in a game on Friday. No problem. It is beginning to even beat. If there's people around that want to do some episode 4 right now, I can probably host the game. So this is chat's opportunity to tell me if they would like to do that literally right now. This character should have everything she needs. Well, <laughs> well apparently she's equipped with everything that she currently needs. But I meant more in the sense that the striker unit is here. So if team wants to do purple ID... Something orange ID. Just let me know which ID chant you prefer. And I'll make a game for it. Otherwise, I could do green and red ID. Just depends on whether you, whether you would want a pod versus do a full quest. But good luck at the gym, for sure. So we'll give people some minutes to join in. Hmm. What do I feel like doing more, is the question. Yeah. I mean, as I said before, if team wants to do green or, green or red ID... Probably lean a little more towards that, but I'm okay with purple if you want to just do a quick pod. But I do need to see who is here. So you're more than welcome to join in, Dengo. Yeah, let's start off with a little pod, I guess, since I'm on this character anyway. And we'll do probably green ID, red ID. Give me about an hour and I'll hop in. Sadly, that'll be outside of even B. Well, welcome, Tiggy. Hope my day was well. It was very long. <laughs> Just, I feel slightly burned out from it. I definitely slept right after work. For a little bit before starting the stream. No worries, Tiggy. 
And we got some time. We'll give Chad a moment or so to join in. Do a quick pod just for warm up instead of TTF. And then we'll do uh probably green ID. Doing the uh green ID boss. I'll bring in a force for that though. I don't really have a green ID ranger that isn't that is a raw moral more accurately. Hmm. I really well. I mean, I guess I could technically keep all of these weapons on me. Feels a little excessive, but technically I could make use of these. I'll put away Rosen Shooter. I don't have a reason to use it in this quest. Oh, uh, well, tech... Mm, nah, you know what? I'm just gonna believe that I'm gonna hit the, the zoo. The one zoo. And if I do need to do anything with it, at least I have Heaven Striker. Okay, so we'll be starting up in just a moment. So last call for people wanting to join in. We'll switch over to green ID. Is there anything you were looking to hunt, Dango? Check my mag, striker unit, good, good, good. You're a shock. I guess that's okay. I don't really have to optimize a pod run. Do a little dance. Gotta get Dango, I think, a Parasite to Gene Flow at some point. Maybe a Red Ring. Alright, well, I don't see anybody hopping in. So we'll just do a quick pod. Uh oh. Uh oh. Does Dango not belong to a team that has pod? Question mark? Rip? <laughs> Rip Dango's team. You're in a dead team? I think so. Man, no pod. Well, that that kind of ruins things. Oh, I ha yeah, I, you could join in if you want. I have a million free slots. I just thought it was funny. I was like, let's do pod. And then the menu went, no, thou shall not receive pod. That's up to you. I forget how you drop out, to be honest. I don't think I've done it before. I'm assuming you have to go to the counter. Well, anyway, since we can't do pod, we will exit quest. Oh, unless Dango's switching now. Oh, Dango is now free agenting. Dango has been invited. There we go. Dango is now free. Okay, so now it should be in. Yeah, that's a shame about the other team, though. I, w I wasn't sure what team you were in, if it was, like, friends or something. There we go. A little point of disaster. So we'll do a little bit of this, and then maybe do some green ID, red ID stuff.
script the S Dark. Oh, got rewarded for playing so far. It's always nice. I want. Oh, there we go. I was wondering what was going on with my buttons for a second, then I looked. Never mind. Put Gafoe in the triangle slot. That's fine. Attack from here, maybe. Oh, I thought that would hit the S arc if I reoriented. Like, slightly out of range. That's unfortunate. Why, why is he shooting lasers at me? Stop that. Just charge at me. Jerk. You. I'll go this way, Dango could go the other way. I don't really want to deal with the dwarf on. Seriously, with the fireballs, come on. What a jerk. That's one thing I never really understood about Heaven Striker. It was like, you know, it goes through the uh, protection of the satellite lizard, and then just sometimes it's just like, nah, we're not gonna target, even though, <laughs> even though we probably could. We'll just choose not to. Makes me sad. Should just always work. Do some normal shots there. So this is just one target. Get a change of luck. We'll see what the forecast is after this. Since I don't have my MST focused Heaven Striker mag, it's probably better for me to use gun a bit more often than laser. Let's go assist Dango. Stupid dwarf on. Going back to the tried and true. Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta whip out the last one. What can I say? Ranger human male says in parameter. Welcome in parameter. Yeah. I just checked, I don't have the full shortcuts on this character. Should set them up on the characters I use more often. A couple of them have it. I need all of them to have it. The minimum I need is bank and lobby, but I do want to make sure I have forecasts in there. It's nice to be able to check it. battle. Not bad. Well, if there's new players that want it, I have like six. Really don't mind you having a good unit.
Thank you, Rufoe. <laughs> Saving us all time. Yeah, I feel like I said we would do more episode 4 from last time. Although usually I forget between stream. It's not intentional. Just have a lot going on. But I'm pretty sure we have not done Cannon Rouge while it was Rare Week. That's what I was thinking about. Goodbye, Zoo. Yeah, this might actually be faster unless there's more enemies. There we go. You know what? I'll donate. Why not? We'll believe in Dango. Poor Dango. The plight of the controller user. Kvoe <laughs> buys an optimal, oh no. As long as I stand near the structure after this, I should be good. Reapply buffs to Dengo. Oh, I thought it was out of range of that. That sucks. Uh, it really sucks, because that got me hit. Yeah, I'm going to fight over here, because I know the Dwarfon's coming. Got to weaken them a little bit for Dango, though. I had a feeling like I could stop this with normals. I believed. I was like, I could bring Frozen Shooter to get it guaranteed, but I could just time it. Yeah, poor Dorfon. It can't do anything here. Get my material up. Hopefully everybody's doing well today. So after this, if people want to join in with Pew Pew Lasers, I'll just play regular Force, I think, in Episode 4. I just figure it's been a while since I used this character for anything. I was gonna say it's not like I believe in rare enemy week anyway. <laughs> Knowing us, we'll get uh, we'll get there. If I want a pew pew, nah. Episode four to me is pew pew laser force. I like force in episode four. I will do quadra force teams for sure. I love it. Although depending on where I am, sometimes I don't mind playing Hugh Casile. It just depends on what the need of the party is. So like if I wanted to do a red ID game, for example, and all we needed was like roll ATP to deal with uh Ron Detonator or something. Could probably bring it. Joke's on you game. I'd still atomize her on a quick menu just so I don't have to slow down for that. Now perish. Otherwise, I got a wet ID character. That's good for these kinds of runs. So if we just wanted to try to go for limiter, despite it not being rare enemy, it's on the menu technically. Got a little happy little Gafoe. Gonna line up with the crystal. We're gonna realize we get Gafoe slightly too early, which is unfortunate. That's fine. I should still be able to make it up. Seriously, it lasered me. 
Please make it stop shooting me. I thought it was gonna die bomb again, which didn't matter. How rude. Yeah, if I mess up the initial Gafoe, bad things can happen. And that was the bad thing that can happen. Now he's just like in the middle of nowhere. Well, this is why laser is useful. And the enemy just decides it wants to go out of bounds. Uh, they're canceling my attacks. Okay, I need like one second of not getting hit, please. Oh, I try made it. Excuse me. Chat, excuse me. You can't take my try made and kill me. Excuse me. PSO. PSO, my try made is consumed. I should not be dead. Excuse me. <laughs> Chat, I'd like to report a complaint. <laughs> what was that? Why did I die while using try mate? That's not fair. I'm gonna go with the objection on that one. I feel like going back and clipping that. That was just kind of insane. I died like in the same frame that I healed. So unfortunate. I saw my health actually go to full before I died. Rip my HP. We like to call that unlucky. Okay, so for this phase... Yeah, I guess pew pew laser is fine. Okay, right, so we did not get the other thing, but that's fine. The backup is dragon scale. This is the way I view it. It's it's not that we're hunting for Heaven Striker on purple ID. We're gathering more dragon scales, and coincidentally, we'll be given chances at Heaven Striker. That's how I view it when you do rare um, item week into these bosses. Just go, eh, I want dragon scale. Or in the case of like green ID, I actually probably want Galatine, and I really don't want to see Kondryu. Every time I see Kondryu, it just makes me sad. I'm like, no. I don't want it. Oh, that's kind of unfair. I went to go shoot the red one, but then it got pushed away. Anyway, should be over. So Dango will stay in the main room at, if we picture a clock, somewhere between 5 o'clock and 4 o'clock in this room. As long as he's in like the southeast corner, I think we're fine. I'm just going to go up and solo this phase. Because Pew Pew Laser doesn't care about this. And Dango could just mech gun its brains out when it goes back into the main room. Okay, so we're just going to double check. Yeah, so that'll mean Dango gets like a potentially 20 second or so head start on me once this phase is over. I guess I'll play it safe and go against the wall. Okay, got rewarded. As long as he doesn't just spinner me randomly. Okay, good. Now we're seeing the true power of Pew Pew Laser. Speaking is fendering me randomly. Rude. Oh, I got it out of sync by like a couple sec or a couple frames. That's unfortunate. As long as I don't do that more than once, we should be fine. Okay. Perfect setup. So it's all down to Dango. Can Dango obliterate Shamberton? As you can see, I'm still walking here. He almost killed Shamberton. I'm almost in range and dead. Rip Shamberton.
Nice. Ray gun with 45 hit, no special. Chat, that is so sad. It had potential. Let's put it on the wall of sadness. <laughs> so there's a couple of different runs that potentially could be done for episode four. Pod is a common one. We've done the episode four boss run, which is good for green ID and red ID, honestly. Being able to go to the boss and have backup Centurion abilities and or Galatines, pretty powerful of a run. For purple ID specifically, there's the... Name of the quest is blanking on me, but it has all the Heaven Strikers. Give me a moment as I try to remember the name of the quest. See, the problem with quest names in PSO is that all of them are so similar, I do not recall which one it is. Let me go backwards. It drops Heaven Striker. So I want it quests with high Pyrogorons. It would be, I believe, new mop up Operation 3. I had to double check that. And that is a very focused run with extremely high XP. But it's usually recommended we bring in a full party. So it really just depends on who's there. That's not a quest I would two man. Like I could do the v I could do like the boss rush with two people. That quest with just two people is a little rough. Because there's so many ground detonators, so many enemies per wave that it's really hard to clear them consistently. And that quest is actually kind of fun to do as a cast. In the sense that you can I'm going to take out the Goron Detonators very quickly for other people as all the regular fire weak enemies are obliterated with Gafoe stacks. So it's like a quest that I, I do actually running like running with like one or two casts. Or full committing, I guess you could do like one Ramar slash Ramoral and three casts. <laughs> Just enough to give them the shifter and then it's all good. Okay. So we'll see who's in the lobby waiting for us, if anybody. Oh, there's a ranger. I believe that is in parameter. Let's do a little bit of... We'll do just normal boss into maybe purple ID. Because neither of those really rely on certain IDs. So I'm going to bring in a force. We'll do the normal boss quest for episode 4. That way we could say we showcased new quests today. I didn't run just TTFRT all day. Because I know some people will tune out as soon as they see that. So today we even started without touching TTF. Oh, he's very close to leveling. That's kind of unfortunate. It just shows that I have a lot of fun on green ID. He is... 3 mil away? Yeah, about. Okay, game is up. So let's describe why green ID is good so that people that haven't played it before understand what's going on. So the reason why green ID is ridiculous in episode 4, you get uh, cannon bruise chances from Dorf on Eclair, which is kind of nice. Blackhound Creasing because you're cast, V101 from Zeus, uh, everybody gets photon crystals but they get it from satellite lizards. Sacred Duster we learned before is a very specific niche item, as is Rianov 5 potentially for... Uh, Worm boss, technically. The underground, though, has heavenly powers, gratias, galatines, centurion abilities, heaven strikers. Just kind of a nice mix of items throughout. So if we go ahead and switch to maximum attack E episode 4. It's a nice quest that takes you start to finish to the boss.
And I feel like it's not too overwhelming for people just only playing with a couple forces. And it doesn't feel impossible without a cast. It's a good sign for the quest. I'm gonna have to remember I did not bring my other items. So what I'm gonna do... Ooh. Oh, my menu's all over the place. I'm gonna be right back real quick. I'm gonna let team handle this. Let me take out at least his other units, and then we're good to go. So what I would recommend is double Adept, and then we'll bring in Gafoe, Rafoe, Rabarda. Should be good enough. I shouldn't really need lightning for anything, at least. So that's fine. I don't know if we merge, I guess. Arguably, I could bring in a slicer, but I didn't want to waste time since we already started the quest. We're just going to zap them, do traditional force things. Mostly, though, Babudas will be taken care of by friends. That's usually our least important target. As a force, we should be focusing on anything fire weak. Sack a couple of Gafoe for the next wave. Hello, Dorfon. Take that damage. Kaboom. Yeah, ideally what we would bring here is probably for Fomar, honestly, no weapons. But we'd probably bring in Slicer Fanatic just to assist with demons. But honestly, when you party with a Ranger, it's really not necessary. It's probably better just to stack Gafoe in those scenarios. For those that are curious. We'll, we'll kind of do it if we see an opportunity, but that's about it. We're going to help them combo kill by Zaloring there. Yeah, the reason Adept is important is that if you don't bring it, you are kind of dependent on um, either going back at least once or picking up a lot of tri-fluids on the way there. Somebody found Parasitic Gene Flow. Soon that will be there and go. I like using Rafoe there because I can hit the Yowies and stunlock the Zoos. But unfortunately, if the Zoo does fly out of range, that can happen. Uh, we know Dorfon is coming up, so what I like to do, I like to come over here. So that way I'm out of their charge range. If you literally just go towards the bridge, they generally won't hit you. See what I mean? could reapply buffs probably in the next room. It's a little early to reapply. <laughs> no matter how much it blinks, I don't think the next room will take 2 minutes and 30 seconds. We're going to see the Rappies descend from heaven. Uh, This is not a bad one, actually, to stack. What's it called? Gafoe. I noticed my menus are off. I think he doesn't have quite the right shortcut setup, sadly. I went to go do my quick swap with my normal setup. But I think he's still on the basic stuff. As long as we just zap every now and then, Nozu will die bomb. In the meantime, we should just stack a Foey. Especially during Easter event, we want to make sure we don't let the Rappies get away. Don't scare to use stuff that they're not necessarily weak against. Just to ensure that we get them. And plus, if we know there's going to be Yowies or Satellite Lizards coming in, the Foey damage is so good. I guess he's technically set up to Gafoe quickly. I guess I could do the quick menu Gafoe. I'm using that to slow them down, not necessarily to damage them. Because they are very annoying with their fireball.
a little D-band in there, because I think that one was the bet that we're off. We can see me doing the menu to, to frame one Gafoe. That's how you know it's serious business. So this will allow maximum stacking of the Gafoe. Nice spot on draw. Yeah, look at that. We did several thousand damage just with Gifoe. Team will very much clean up. Don't have too much to worry about there. I will right, we'll take the Scape Doll and the Trifluid. So you can see, like, I started the quest. I used a Trifluid. So I just need to see one every, like, three or four rooms and we're good. Take the Evade Material. So anyway, he's not set up for the other commands quickly, but... He is set up for the fast commands here, at least. What I'd like to do is I'd like to set up Rafoe at the bottom of the list. Need trifluids? Let me know, says Dango. Sure thing. I should be good for a while. If I need it, it'll be like literally right before the boss. So we can pretty much just stack as quickly as possible here. The reason we want to have Gazond at the top of the list is it's one of the fastest spells we can cast. Roberta is also pretty easily spammed, so you want to be able to access that quickly. Oh, I forgot to shift it on the way through. My bad. Talking about techniques. I debanded, forgot to shift it afterwards. But anyway, we're going to clear these. Get knocked over. Uh, We'll do good Bowie here. That should be fun. So anyway, the reason you want to quick cast Gafoe is not necessarily to reduce time for it to come out by itself. It's more so that you could have more active Gafoe's at once. And when you see things like the Satellite Lizard Wave come in, see how they're almost dead? Like, almost all of that was purely through the stack Gafoe. And it actually does make a difference because having one or two less stacks of Gafoe is potentially upwards of, like, almost, especially in single player, potentially up to a thousand damage less. You're just leaving on the table. So there's enemies that wouldn't even literally get a turn to do anything if you do this to stack Gafoe. So it's a good habit to get into. If you don't do it for anything else, Gafoe gives you like a million years to do it. Oh, there's enough enemies here. I should just lure. And also debuff. You have to be careful though, because if you do get meleeed, you got a menu again. And in those scenarios, it is faster to initiate the wave by using a quick command. All right, so we know there's going to be a grouping of Dwarfons. I'm going to come over here. We're going to go to where Imperimeter is standing. I'm going to put a little Gafoe out there. Ooh. Unfortunately, Dango kind of pulled them far from us. That's unfortunate. Uh, we're now in improvised mode since we don't have a clean lineup of them. But anyway, at least we could Gafoe. So if nothing else, we could chip them out for the team. Probably grants this guy a little bit, actually. There we go. Look at that, we got another Tri-Fluid. Yeah, I think this quest is also a pretty good mix of enemies. So honestly, if you're looking to do Episode 4 and still do Rare Hunts, they still get a lot of chances at Easter eggs and stuff like that. Episode 4 is generally a fairly dense quest overall when you do, like, most of their massive attacks anyway. So being able to do that is kind of sick. Okay, so our duty, first and foremost, is to kill all the Marissas. We stack a foe like a madman, identify the waves where Marissa is coming, and if you see an enemy that's out of control, like that Goron Detonator that's able to teleport on us, we just debuff. You don't mess around with them, you just do what you need to do. Let the team kill so that way your Gafoe's can stack. It's more important you keep stacking when you play the Force than it is to assist sometimes. Like, you don't need to be the person that does the last 50 damage. It's better that you do the next 800 damage by continuing the stacks. Do you know what I mean? Getting in here might actually be fortuitous because it gives us faster casting potentially. I'll do one freeze here to slow them up a little bit. I'm going to go back to stacking. 
But after the zoo, we know it's going to be a horrible, horrible Marissa wave. So the Gafoes here should slow the zoos down and allow them to kill. So we're not going to worry about damaging them. We are going to laugh at the Marissa's health bars. Look at that HP damage we did. Thanks to the perfect stack of Foey. Are they all, are they all dead? Wow, that's disgusting. Like, that's what I'm talking about. That's the power of having a perfectly stacked Gafoey. In multiplayer by myself, I killed almost every single enemy there. So that is the importance. That 800 damage makes a big difference. It's whether or not Marissa gives you a bad time. You really do not want to have a bad time with Marissa. <laughs> this is a PSA. Stack your Marissa properly. Or, no, Marissa. Stack your uh, Gafoey properly on Marissa. It is... Did you enjoy seeing that damage difference, Tiggy? Like, I just straight up killed that entire room with just a single force. Actually insane. Anyway, final enemy, Grants. We'll hope a little bit. We could do some good burst damage with Grants, so if somebody's demoning, whether it's a Slicer Fanatic or a Demon Mech Gun, uh, we could usually one-touch. That's probably one of the few times we'll choose not to stack a Foey. Delicious in desert. Oh, no. Yeah, we're going to do my favorite room in the game. I love them die bombing here. So we know immediately after this, there's going to be Goron detonators. Because this is my favorite room in the game. So I know exactly what proceeds or what follows it. Um, the Foley stacking is okay here. I must please stop interrupting my debuffs. Stop it. Why am I taking so much damage? Oh, ignition cloak. That's fine. I wasn't sure if I was properly stacking stuff or not with elemental damage. Well, anyway, I mostly just want to do burst in the middle here versus the Marissa's, is what I was going to say. So you can see here, like, they almost got me, and then they walk into the Gafoe and die. So as long as you're wary of which waves are the Marissa's, then you can do whatever. Like, I can mess around on this wave. I don't need to care at all. Just shut them down completely here. Eat it up a little bit. Anyway, back to Gafoe stacking. I think the music paused. We'll fix that in a moment. We're too busy stacking. <laughs> Thank you, Gafoe. How is that zoo still alive? Okay, there we go. Yep, and because I'm stacking, I did half of the HP of the satellite lizard there. Generally, if you know a wave is only going to have one set of enemies weak to fire, it's probably better to Rafoe. But honestly, there's so many times where I just want to stack a Foe, like right here. See that? They all die in like one more. So if I had stacked and switched to... Oh, actually, that's the other tech tip. So if you are going to stack a Foe and you're not sure if you kill, like there I now know I don't kill stacked um, Rappy spawns, for example. I could specifically when they're about to fall switch over to even just a fire scepter and that will let me do that difference in damage so if i'm doing 500 per scepter or per fireball i probably do about another 40 to 50 per stack fireball because it applies retroactively because they haven't been hit yet just kind of unfair and then they explode So yeah, we could just do a quick swap into Fire Scepter. I guess that's why I left Fire Scepter on him from last time. So now I know. Oh, I missed the Trifluid. That's a shame. Oh well, doesn't really matter. I've got eight more. We'll go back to stacking. So yeah, we have completely optimized Gafoe. Maybe not in positioning, but at least in cast speed. Yeah, we definitely want to debuff this room. Do a couple Razans here and there. Slow them down a little. I'm feeling kind of targeted by them. I'm not going to lie. I just keep seeing my health bar go down by a lot. Anyway, back to Gavoi stacking here. So we're right in the between. So we could do some Rebarta here to slow if we need to. Anyway, back to Gavoi stacking. Just okay damage on Pyrogorons, but not the best. We'll freeze them a little here. Back to Gafoe stacking. Nice. So yeah, they can basically just leave the team to focus on zoos. They have like just enough HP that we can't do much with them. Oh, I should have swapped. 
I miscounted which one was the Mercy Wave. That's so shit. That's so sad. What a shame. I feel like I'm getting a little bullied by them. You guys, leave me alone. <laughs> Don't make me put them on Red Ring for defense. Do we know eventually it's going to be Zeus and Gerdabulu? Or not Zeus and Gerdabulu, Gorn Detonator and Gerdabulu. Team has already absolutely annihilated that enemy. Oh, I shame killed him with Rezond. Oh, that's my favorite. I was not expecting him to go below 100 HP, but here we are. Heal up, everybody. Good job. Lots of mono grinder chances. I should probably pick up a few. I do need a lot for potentially S rank weapons at some point. So, me having upwards of 400 is honestly not enough still. Because I think you need potentially 200 per weapon. Just kind of bonkers. Um. I guess I could just do traditional stacking here. Definitely need to make sure we debuff. Casting slower also conserves our TP. Let's heal the team here. They're taking damage from me finally. There we go. <laughs> heal Dango. Go back to stacking. Ooh, look at that damage. Goodbye. I mean, that's pretty That's pretty nice. I'm not even a Faux Newman, and he's able to kill that in one combo. So Faux Newman would absolutely not care about this at all. They would 100% kill without needing the Fire Scepter. Let's debuff a little. I was gonna say, let's debuff a little before we get hit. Because they get lasered. Anyway, I don't want Fire Scepter anymore. Yeah, the downside of having a weapon equipped with the Fomar in particular is uh, slower casts means you might not get the debuffs you want out. Is Fo Newman the Hugh Cast of Forces? Definitely. He doesn't care. That damage multiplier is so unfair on him. Goodbye, Greta Bulu. I put Grants on you. That was the, you're already dead on him. <laughs> Missed a few grinders, but I think we did okay. Uh, well, when you fight the boss, never put a Gavoe merge on. Probably switch it over to Rafoe. Technically, you could stack up damage on the spinners, technically. I think I want fire, but we'll see. I do have a V101 in case I did want to melee with Slicer at some point, but it's all good. So I'll basically go with whoever ends up going into the other room, because I can rest to them so they could just focus on DPS. So typically it'll be like either the Force goes there or the Ranger goes there. Force can technically do some damage with Robarda, but it's kind of easy to miss it in most scenarios, because if it reels back at all, you dodge. Whereas, like, a charge arm will hit even if they reel back, for example, and Heaven Striker doesn't care about the rules. Anyway, we're, we're telling the Worm Boss to knock it off. There we go. So yeah, switching to fire usually is pretty fast there. I think if it's conjure you, it's ice or something awkward. And I hate it. I hate using ice to clear the spitters there. But if you're really not sure, you can just stand in the, in the middle and Gafoe, technically. So we'll let Dango go to the, the 4 o'clock slash 5 o'clock position. I hate it! I hate it! I hate it indeed, Tiggy. Every time I have to use Rivarda versus this boss, it feels so terrible. So, a really good Cannon Rouge, Baran's Launcher, Charge Arm, solid options for this boss. 
It has Dark Element. We want a Zalore for the team. We're going to heal so that way he could focus damage. Fortunately, we only need to hit four parts, so Baran's launcher misses pretty much nothing. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of damage there. When it comes back into position, that's probably the best time to hit it. We're gonna speed it up a little with Rebarda. And again, our goal our goal is mostly to keep our companion alive. Or angry dolphin it in the face. Which honestly might come up if it reels back again. Okay. So technically if Dango had Magblast and dolphins it, it would die. But either way, it's fine to do damage. Ooh, is it doing mid laser though? It, it might not be targetable during laser. We'll see. I did donate regardless. Yeah, the e maybe? Yeah, it did die. Okay. It depends. There's certain animation poses of the laser where it just won't hit, which is kind of annoying. But yeah, I think it got nuked. I'm pointing. I'm like, that's a dead boss. You died to Photon Blast. Take that meta. <laughs> but yeah, technically if I had Magblast coming into St. Millions room, I could, in theory, start the battle off with Dolphin, because that does upwards of 4,000 damage, especially if other people donate, then it goes even higher. So four full man donating is kind of insane damage, to be honest. I don't remember what my synchro rate is with this character, though. Oh, it's a full. Yeah, that would have been big damage. So those are the kinds of things we have to kind of think about. And that's why I advocate... Oh, nice tickets. That's why I also kind of advocate... If you have, like, a free slot... Like, say I have this V101 that did nothing because I didn't bring weapons. If I had switched that out for uh, PP Create, I could have actually had Mag Blast into that boss battle. So, I know people sleep on it, but honestly, like, this is the kind of quest where I should really consider bringing it. Where Mag Blast actually matters. Because I have, like... 21 minutes to build meter or like 18 minutes or so depending on how many people are there so just think about how many ticks i get at that pb crate i'm guaranteed to get it basically every single time when i go down there so i just have to get hit by like a couple of strikes at most it's kind of crazy but anyway that's how you can slightly optimize it when you don't care about v101 at all or like heavenly battle equivalent because other people cover your roles um, I guess we could do the same quest, but red ID. And then if we have a fourth person, I would want to do um, new mop up operation three. That's a quest I don't like going in less than four. This quest though is fun. So we'll put away our newly acquired adepts. Also, I put away some of my PDs so I can at least put stuff away now. That was really bothering me the other day. I was at 99 forever. So I guess I could bring in Dumpling, because she's also a force. Although with her, I'll be using Magical Piece pretty much the whole time. Thank you, Calvisha. Hopefully you're doing well today. Oh no, an 8 level she could use Red Ring. Ooh. I feel like that's one of the most pointless Red Rings. <laughs> Just I, Unless I'm really going for that Hell Demon combo. She is not doing anything. Look, she's she's basically all good to go. I just gotta put on her uh, adepts. That's fine. The same quest again, but this time different 
ID. So ideally here, we do want to see the rare boss. Green ID. Sadly, we fought the boss that I was looking for, but did not get Galatine. So in theory, Green ID does get some chances at Cannon Rouge, but Red ID is the primary Cannon Rouge one. So every time we see the Babudas, they're our main target. Zabudas give Disco a Brave Man, which is a great item. Dorfon can drop Crimson Code if it's Dorfon Eclair version or Heavenly Battle, which is good for beginner players. Heavenly Mind is not all that great from Zoo. Pazuzu has a bad drop, unfortunately. Underground, though, we have Heaven Striker, Disco Brave Man, Gracia, and then Heavenly slash Centurion ability. So we have like a decent underground. It's just unfortunately Zoos are on the weaker end. So if we're strictly doing underground, I think green is a little better. But if we're looking for, I have all my items, I don't need V101s, I guess you could do it from that perspective and flip it. Let me fix these shortcuts and then we'll proceed. So she just needs the double adepts. And we'll be good to go. Yeah, that's the downside of running forces of all IDs. It's mostly just the adepts. <laughs> Those are the ones where it's like, man, it's kind of mandatory. Ooh, my defense is terrible, even with the Centurion. So anyway, we're going to be basically wielding Fire Scepter for foeing, otherwise we sack Magical Piece. I don't know if this character's techniques are set up properly. I'll find out in a moment, though. So last call for people looking to join, and then we'll get started. But she's not too far away from leveling. Levels still matter for her. She's not maxed at M she's not max MST and not max defense, both of which I actually care about on this character. Okay, don't see anybody in the chat making a comment, so I guess we'll go. Oop. There we go. Yeah, I wish I could see my quick menu while I'm here rather than having to go into the actual field to see what it is. That does make me sad. Let's see, is our quick menu set up properly? Kind of? Where's Gafoe? Where, where is Gafoe? Ew, it's... Oh, it's there. Uh... Actually, that's fine, because she does Foe, Barda. Okay, I'll just learn to deal with it. Did I select the right quest? This doesn't look right. No. I don't know what quest I selected. That's what I get for being distracted. I mean, I'll kill the Babudas. They're here. This is my, norm my mortal nemesis for Cannon Rouge. But we should be in the normal arena. Give me a second. I gotta have a consistent place for Ryuker. We're gonna if you could check what quests you're doing. Yeah, let's let's reset though, because I, I wanna do the boss rush one we did. I must have hit the one before it. Actually, simulation. I don't think I've ever talked to this character before. Yeah, let's reset it. Because I'm, I'm expecting the battle arena one where I try to dodge the enemy. My bad. I'm not sure what I autopiloted into. But I feel, because the Babuda was there, I had to kill it. I mean, that's, that's a fair choice. Like, I do want another Cannon Rouge. 
So yeah, we've Glide Divine for support purposes, but honestly, most of the time, we're going to be using Gafoe. <laughs> Almost hit VR. I must have hit 4R or something I just missed. Or this one. Because it did talk about randomization. I think both of those have randomization. Buma has found Handgun Milo. Nice. There we go. This is looking correct to me. So here we're not going to Rafoe right away because I don't want to scare the Rappies. That's probably the most self-control I need in the quest. And then it's just, oops, I'll Gafoe. So we'll let the team handle this. I'll even shame slap the Sand Rappy with my awful melee. Let's give him a moment to approach. And now we just Gafoe spam. So that is the downside. Like, Gafoe, you don't need to cast very rapidly. <laughs> so you can put it deeper in the menu. The problem with that is if you do get hit, it takes longer to start the combo again. As I said before, it's probably better just to start it off with one of these, and then if you need to cast other spells, you can. Nice Disco Bray Man. Proof of why people do Red ID. Should be big damage to the Yowies. Wow. Even without any bonuses, she almost one-shot the wave. Also, I don't even think she has the right merge, right? Yeah, she doesn't even have a good merge on. That's kind of crazy how high that damage was. Yeah, we can at least AoE heal pretty easily here. So let's see what happens when we stack damage properly. Almost a one-shot. So they're like a little shy of dying. That would tell me that if I had taken a... Uh, Ignition... Oh, no, she is using Ignition Cloak. Never mind. I was gonna say, I could optimize it for 10% more damage with Ignition Cloak, but I'm like, wait a minute. Disregard. Well, anyway, if I if I slightly increase my MST by 20, maybe that would kill with 5 Gafoe stacks? Maybe? Because roughly every 5 damage is a damage point. So you have to think, if I'm stacking 5 to 6 Gafoe... Is potentially enough to put us over, depending on how much it actually adds. Okay, let's go back to Gafoe. This will slow them down. See him going in the little animation every now and then. That's all we want. Half health the satellite lizards. Awesome. Oh, we're like just a little shy. Well, Tom Crystal, nice. So most of the time, they don't need to worry about the satellite lizards. As long as they kill the zoos, we should be good. Okay, same thing as before. I'm going to stay up here because I don't feel like getting squished by Dwarfon. But for people looking to paralyze, they probably should stay about where Imperameter is. I just don't want to get hit, so I'm going to be like full screen. I don't want anything to deal with what's going on on screen. The only real difference between, like, the Fomar playing this and, like, the Fonural is that, like, if I see a lone zoo, I could just regular Barda them to death. Otherwise, like, our Grand's damage is fairly high due to our MST. We just stick to this. Or regular Foey. If we have a Foey booster, like, Magical Piece is not the Foey booster, but if I had, for example, Club of Laconium or Summit Moon, I would probably actually just uh, regular Foey them to death. Especially with V801. It goes pretty quickly. Multiple enemies still probably better to Gafoe. So yeah, we just have to make sure when we're done with this room, I buff the team. And probably during the time that we're debuffing to deal with the annoying Cannon Rouge enemies, uh, we're going to probably rebuff the team there. Because that's probably our most convenient time. Because we're not going to be doing spell damage. But every other room, we want to stack that Gafoe as much as possible. Speaking of which... <laughs> oh, look at that. That actually almost one-shot the wave. Wow. So that's another example. I actually genuinely think if I had God Technique on with uh, Max MSD, that would have killed. So that's actually pretty impressive to basically one-shot the wave. Anyway, time to buff the team. We got some time here. It's just Babuda land. So yeah, definitely could squeeze out potential. 
I guess that's the other item of choice. If you don't have adepts, if you have any god techniques from gambling or whatever, uh, they are an excellent way to squeeze out a little more DPS, especially with Stack of Foe. It, especially if you're not using level 29 Gafoe already, then it's a much bigger damage difference. For me, it'll just be one level, so I might be doing another 15 to 20, but that's per fireball. So anything that misses by only, let's say, 60 is probably dead with God Technique. So just think that's an entire one less spell you have to use, and that could result in you not even taking damage at all, which is kind of important when we're talking about things like the stupid Marissa's. We don't have to necessarily one-shot the Satellite Lizards, even though it'll save time, but we gotta make sure we do as much damage as possible to Marissa's. Welcome, Edward Nigma. I hope you're doing well. If you'd like to join in, we're just doing all things Episode 4 at the moment. AKA the Force Playground. <laughs> Horses do whatever they want. Are you looking for anything in particular, Edward Nigma? Do a couple daps here, and then we'll go back to Gafoe stacking. Again, our job here is not to kill the Babuda. We we have given up on killing this enemy. Our Razan does like 200. We're never killing them. We're gonna let the team just nuke them. It's better we keep stacking. Because then stuff like this happens where they just kind of melt. A little Zalore action for the team. Yeah, even without proper Gafoe stacks there, I almost one-shot this out of the Lizards. Still be low-ish. It should go pretty quickly. Oops, I went the wrong way on the list. Back to Gafoe stacking. Look how much damage we're doing. Yeah, see how we're off by 46? We could definitely optimize. I think God Technique plus MST would kill. Guaranteed. So that's probably one of the few times that the 10% from Ignition Cloak is like 100% mandatory on this character. Yeah, so we're coming up to the Quadra Astarx. As long as we stay on the left side, we should be good here. I meant to debuff them first, attack-wise. There we go. So we're going to have a happy little gathering over here. Put a little fireball down. There we go. Stop their charge. Uh, control, chaos. We're just going to stack a foe. Anything vaguely low will probably die. Nice. Good job, team. Take one of these. Take the power material. See, even though Foam New World isn't, like, quote-unquote optimal, she's still fun. You just have to... You have to really take advantage of her levels, though. Because if she doesn't have the MST, she's just strictly worse than Foam New Min. But at least now that she's above 1500, she has, like, some benefits. And most of that will come down to Grant's. Grants and, like, one-off spells. So she could have an edge on the uh, Fomar, for example. If he needs to do 360 lightning, hers will just do more. Downside is that she doesn't stunlock quite the same as they do. Look at that damage. Nasty. Goodbye, room. Oh, new world is cuter than phone human checkmate. Poor phone human. He's just living his best clown shoe life. All right, we do not want to stop stacking Gafoe because we know we know it's the garbage enemy is coming up. There we go. That was a little slower. I think I missed one Gafoe stack in there. I should probably move a little further down here so the Rappies don't run. Small optimization. 
I do actually want their XP. So yeah, overall my damage is like probably a little lower than Fomar, and that mostly just has to do with not necessarily the damage per fireball, it's mostly just cast speed. She just doesn't get as many fireballs out compared to the Phonumens. Well, that Marissa's ultra dead, GG. Block one, Cherry has found what? Only K combat with how much hit? 25, so 35 total. <laughs> now I feel compelled to say that every time. I hate saying that. I just want to read what the ticker says. Can we all be in agreement that if it says 25 hit, I can say 25 hit? Feels annoying to add that correction. Okay, let's slow them down a little bit here. Debo. Uh, we'll unlock a little bit to help the team. Once they get one kill, that's not too bad. Normally, if there's two casts on the quest, if somebody goes to, like, the northeast and the southwest, they can just shut down this wave instantly. That's why I said before, I think casts are actually pretty fun in episode four. As long as you have, like, just a little bit of support, it's fine. Oops. That's fine. We can correct it real quick. That did a lot of damage. That's kind of the downside to the photo roll. She takes so much damage in episode 4. On the flip side, I will probably have Mag Blast if I get focused again. She builds it so fast. Nerve Vision's actually decent for Dolphin damage. At some point, I probably want to take damage. Yeah, like every hit is 3% without debuff. So yeah, that would have been almost 11 minutes of charging Photon Blast. I definitely would have had it. Ooh, I think it was slightly off-center, but I was not punished for that. Goodbye, Rappies. Those poor students are just getting juggled. Here's an example. It's better for me to Barda here than it is to use Grants. Because Grants is kind of slow. Those are the things you could try to optimize to make the photo world a bit more fun. In, as I said before, single player is not quite representative of how good photo world is compared to. Uh, well, reverse that. Multiplayer is not representative of how good photo world is. If she shines where enemies have lower ice resistance, like in single player. And sadly, they just kind of buff the ice resist to, like, ungodly levels for some reason in multiplayer, and it's so sad. Don't really know why they did that. Uh, oops. So, things like Zeus, for example, she could basically three-shot in single player, which is pretty bonkers if you think about it. Like, just equip an ice boosting staff for Barda, and it's all over. Okay, I'm building meter. Here we go. Hit me more. I need more meter. There we go. 79, 81, 83, 84, 86. I need meter for the boss. You keep hitting me. I'm not going to stun lock you on purpose. I actually want meter. As long as I'm the one being focused, it doesn't slow the team down. I need to get hit anyway. Anyway, back to Kofoe mashing. Ooh, I'm almost at it. Okay, I think I could debuff here to slow down a little bit. I want to build it, but not that fast. There we go. Let's do a couple freezes for the team. Should make life easy. Anyway, back to Kofoe stacking. Ninety-five meter. Goodbye, the Marissa next to me. You're already dead. There we go. I think she cleared out that way pretty well. Fully expect to get lasered here. Oh, I didn't. She's so good at building meter. Ninety-eight. So she's gonna have it guaranteed for the boss. So I might be able to speed up the next fight by just. 
straight up Dolphinang. Oh, I actually got invincibility. How convenient. So if I had Zond assigned to one of my bars, Zond it when there's only one Gordon detonator is pretty quick. Those are like the little opportunities you should try to take as the food rule. I'm gonna get rid of Wedding March. I'll keep flying me to the moon for later. So we're definitely gonna be attack decoys in the room. Oops. So if we didn't have it before, this room would have given it. Okay, this will slow them down slightly. Heal the team. Unlock for next room. Maybe slow them down a little bit here. Again, we're not looking to damage this wave. We're thinking about the next wave. There we go. Oh, they hit me out of Gafoe. Unfortunate. Okay, big damage, big damage. Think they're all dead? Yeah. Keep up for the team, keep them safe. Now we know that we don't have to worry about stacking. Just focus on crowd control. unlock the zoo while the team fights. Maybe I'll freeze a Goron or two. Prancing him felt a little mean, I'm not gonna lie. So sadly she doesn't do a lot of good makeup damage here, so I'll just weaken them with what I can. I forgot there was one more set of Yaois. I was thinking it was just gonna go to Gerda Bulu. And it's fine. Guess we know for next time. Escape doll, can't pick it up. Uh, I apparently have a lot of escape dolls. Guess that doesn't really matter then. Okay. So we're gonna rebuff the team. I would recommend switching to Fire Scepter. We'll do Rafoe Merge. So that way we do this. I'm gonna feel so sad if it's con well, I kinda want it to be conjure you, but at the same time, I'm gonna be sad if it's conjure you. So yeah, I have dolphin for later. It's fine. So we have a chance of heavenly ability, which is okay to give away to new players. It's stronger than god ability. And it's otherwise just kind of a, a decent unit all rounder. In case they also don't have like accuracy units. Um, I think I want to nuke this one. That was incredibly fast. I don't think that was me that killed it. Oh, it looked like the red one did die. Maybe we targeted the same one. Because I only hit it, I think, once with Rafoe. So anyway, this is where our usefulness kind of falls off. And actually, this is where, in a weird way, we're better than Fomar, because Fomar doesn't have any 360 damage boost, where us with Ice Staff and Rebarda Merge is actually decent. So we we do handle this boss a little better than Fomar. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and Dolphin when I get a chance. So just, just listen for the sound effect. I'm going to try to Dolphin. I'm going to walk straight at the boss, menacingly. But I, I'm calling your bluff, Worm. Oh, oh, you're gonna reel back so I can't dolphin? What a jerk. What an absolute jerk, chat. That's the only move he could do where I don't punish him instantly. Yeah, I'm using. I think this will still hit. He's not all the way back, so I think this will hit. Yeah, that's what I thought. What a jerk. Anyways, to lure him. So I'm left with 420 health. What a number. Hmm. 
Yeah, see, we're doing 392 of Rabarda. So our Rabarda game is actually really strong on this character for this phase. If I just want to nuke... I can speed it up pretty significantly. I think the Omar was only doing 280 or something. That's a pretty, pretty big increase. Maybe a little less, maybe 220. What? Oh, we must be desynced. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did anybody get hit during that? I was so confused. <laughs> it wasn't even lasering. It just did its psychic blast. Darn you, Saint Million, and your psychic blasts. And also, look at that XP per second, despite it being uh, not XP weak. I mean, before the boss kill, we were above 140 a second with only three people. So that's a sign of a really strong quest. Since again, most time you clear TTF, it's 160 or so. So this gives more than TTF per second, if you full clear. So we got seven extra MST, which does translate to about another damage point. So we're slowly getting stronger. So I guess we could do at least one more of these and then we could switch over to uh, maybe some underground purple with the full man team. I did want to get some chances of Cannon Rouge slash Heaven Striker. So I figure it's fair we go for it at least one more time. Is there anything I really want to swap out? Not really. If we get higher in level, Centurion will get replaced, I think, with PP Create. But right now, I actually genuinely need the defense. So I just died too quickly otherwise. Also, that was a very sad one defense on level up. Not gonna lie. But hey, at least our spells are stronger. So let's go ahead and create another one. And then we'll mix up the quests, I think, after this. But it'll still be episode 4. That way we could say we did a good, sizable amount of episode 4. But honestly, that quest is just insane. It's so good. Welcome, welcome. So with the faux Newman here, this should be kind of bonkers stupid. We're going to be stacking so much Gafoe. Basically, if it has any fire weakness at all, the, two, the other two will not need to worry about it. As I am going full magical piece Gafoe merge ignition cloak. I cannot optimize my fire damage higher outside of maybe god technique. Which in theory I could use over Centurion. But again, that's when I get higher level. Just to squeeze that damage out. See, so yeah, as long as we keep using our fast menu to uh, do Gafoe, we should be good. Let's do the same quest and see how much XP we, per second we get now that we have a full party. And also a Faux Newman, because Faux Newman broken. Yeah, just fantastic XP. What a great quest to do with people. You don't necessarily need a force, but it definitely helps. So we're gonna practice restraint and not go for or yeah, we're not gonna go for the first wave. Technically, we still can get their rares. Question mark. Oh, we might not get their. We might not get Easter eggs. I guess. So I probably don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm always worried about this, because that's going to spook them. Oh, unfortunate. They got spooked. Rip the spook rappies. Oh, I think the music paused again. Give me one second. We just have another 20 songs to go. Anyway, back to Gafoe stacking. I'm literally not going to do anything other than Gafoe. I don't think it's worth our time. It's better that we just instantly kill the satellite lizards. Here we can benefit a little bit. I could slow them down. I'm going to Delore back into Gafoe stacking because I want to kill the satellite lizards. Yeah, the faster we could get rid of this wave, the better. Perfect. Wow. Full screen laser. That's... Upsetting, but that's fine. 
Uh, random die fluids? Did, oh, I guess I could use them. I try me, pick that up. So again, here's where, like, we can't stack the full wave right away. So these waves, it's better to actually follow weakness. But once it gets to the lightning one, we can, uh... But Buddha, we can start Gafoe stacking again. So I'm just gonna go back to Gafoe stacking. I want to prepare for the satellite lizards. Slash ass Starks. I'm still gonna stack here. Team should be able to kill them really quickly. It's not even worth me swapping. <laughs> yeah, when you when you have two okay, so here's the here's where you do the threat assessment. When you don't have another ranger or hunter wow, event egg and a photon crystal. If you don't have another hunter slash a ranger, like you do actually need to refocus what you're doing. But you also have to recognize, like, when you have, like, a level 180 Humar, that Astark isn't going to last long enough for me to swap weapons. Like, that that creature is dead. Like, it, is, it is GG goodbye. Not long for this world. What a series of drops. Oh, I can't pick up the foot. I can't pick that up. Well, I guess I'll use Fly Me to the Moon. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, I guess I could drop another escape doll. I do want to pick up HP materials, if nothing else, just to trade later. Rip my escape dolls. But yeah, wherever we as forces get that opportunity to stack up on enemies, it's just kind of unfair. Unfortunately, I'm a little behind because I had to go pick up items. But yeah, one in doubt, Zalore, then go back to Gafoe stacking. Just have to look out for the Babuda wave. That one is actually atrocious. Wow, that goes really fast with Kapoes. So we're gonna debuff, so that way they can one-shot back into Kapoe. So I know those, the Babudas are here, but if we do this, at least they don't instantly attack. It gives us a little bit of time. I'm gonna weaken a couple of them. And now that a couple are weakened, back to Kapoe stacking. Just want to make sure the next wave gets Gafoid. Nice. Cannon Rouge, hey. 25 hit, wow. Sorry about the zero hit though. Yeah, that's a pretty good pickup. Depending on what it came with too, that's crazy. Yeah, we're just going to do our best to Gafoid spam. So we're going to go ahead and Zalore. What I meant to do. Don't mind us. Just doing drive-by grances. Goodbye. So there we go. At least we proved it can drop from here. I will be very happy if I see them, but I'll be very doubtful. I'll get one. This item fought me for a long time. It fought me more than Heaven Striker for some reason. Anyway, back to Oops All Gafoe. So much damage. Uh, I could still lower this group, I guess. And one freeze back into Gafoe. Yeah, there we go. Helped a little bit. Let's go ahead and buff the team. Probably Zalore here once. Yeah, there we go. That way they can combo kill more easily. That's basically my strat versus the Babudas. Just make sure they can get combo killed. That's about it. Bye, Buddhas. You're never reaching us. You're weak to fire. GG. Oh, they're so dead. There's so much Sakafoe out here. Yeah, the Silva just exploded. That was kind of crazy. Uh, Probably debuff here. Back into Kafoe stacking. Yeah, honestly, it's like, they just have to kill everything else. We got this. Like, look at the satellite lizards. What are they going to do? Nothing. It's just the zoo now. Keep up while we can. Help the team out a little bit. Back to Kapoe stacking. Uh, I think it's Astark after this, so I guess I could afford not to do this. Yeah. Let's all gather in the center. Or, not the center, the left side. I'm gonna choose not to fireball here. We want them to get kind of close to us. Oh, we'll fireball. That's not too bad. 
so we'll chip them out a little bit with Gafoe. So if they do charge, they should just kind of melt like that. Not too bad. Event egg, nice, nice. So we're already above 160 XP a second, so we're averaging TTF clears for the most part. Kind of nice. I'll reapply some buffs. Some dye fluids. So the only downside with playing with four players versus three players, I'm not going to build meter without the PB create. So probably no dolphin strats. If our team is too good, we will not take damage. If our team is underprepared, then it makes the boss easier, ironically. But I think with this much Kafoe, this this much ATP, this many demons, I don't think the game is going to get a chance to do much. I'm going to let them hit me on purpose there. Perfect. There we go. Building meter. Stacking that Kafoe. Yeah. Goodbye, Marissa's. Look how fast that was. The power of stacked fireball. Ooh, I'm not close enough to the Rappies. Rip Rappies. Oh no, they died anyway. Never mind. We had so much stack damage, it didn't matter. Never mind. I should have believed in the Gafoe. I'm a non believer. Okay, get rid of you. Wow, that was a really fast room. Almost 180 XP a second. So again, it, it's not going to rival the dragon resets in terms of technically raw XP per second, but it's one solid quest, lots of enemies. Oh no, somebody summoned the zoos but didn't stun lock. That makes me so sad. My favorite room was ruined. Rip. The trick is, is if you don't walk in an exact straight line, you'll always get them. So I'll do like a little step to the left just to make sure that I'm not close enough to cause them to do something else. Uh, I definitely want to stack with Bowie here. I know the Marissas are in the middle. The important thing is that they perish. There we go. Mission accomplished. Move slightly closer to the center of the room. So I do need, I do need to be here for the Rappy waves eventually. Debuff, debuff. Then we go back to buff or Fireball. the team kill everything here with the rappies coming up and if nothing else everything's fire weak wow those grons melted due to the lingering gofoe that was actually insane let me get more lingering out there since we could potentially do more damage here here we go there should be an insta death wave yep <laughs> just it's just kind of insane they just literally get deleted from the universe Almost at 190 XP a second. Holy. Okay, let's just wrap things up with a couple of Bardas. That was a fast room. So yeah, the power of the, the four stack is insane. Honestly, even doing another one of these is fun. I'm kind of greedy for the Cannon Rouge, I'm not going to lie. I don't want to make people do Yashmitikov runs. I do like them, but I figure we give some other opportunities for these. Plus, it's going much faster. So we'll save one more into the new mop-up Operation 3. That quest can be kind of grueling, so it's good to kind of warm up on these quests. It's probably better to use Rafoe in that quest over Gafoe. There's a couple of rooms where I think Gafoe is definitely better, like just straight up, even in multiplayer. But honestly, Rafoe is so good there. So I think that quest in particular punishes me if I'm not a Phonuman, because I do need to actually Rafoe. Whereas this quest where it's Gafoe focused, I think she does okay at it. Well, that's just rude. 
Nice of an egg. Oh, I went to Grant's the, the Greater Bulu, and I'm like, wait, he's already dead. He was too strong. Wow, 194 XP a second. This is what I'm talking about. Like, you could really get crazy XP from here. So for people looking for more casual clears, while still getting all endgame items, which is also the important thing, because there are quests you could do that give you a lot of XP, but don't necessarily drop anything that you want. So having the option to do episode 1 versus episode 4 for XP is kind of nice. Like episode 2 XP is kind of like, do you ha have hell? Yes, no. And that's very binary, but you don't need like super strong equipment for this. <laughs> You're it's like, do you have Gafoe? Yes. Kill everything. Wow, they did they took so much damage there that was kind of insane speaking of which goodbye <laughs> so we know when it comes to these we can assist with ice here and we know the wave after this we'll go back to the bowie stacking yeah there we go there we go bowie stack time he might take damage on spawn depends on where they are in the room Oh, I got knocked down. Oh, somebody actually got mag blast. Nice. And we know after this, it's going to be the lone Gertabulu, so he is crazy dead. Goodbye. Another event egg. Yo, 200 XP a second. Wow, we almost touched. Uh, we almost touched TTF reset. That is. That is actually kind of bonkers. That that clear is so fast. Right, so what we want to do is we want to swap out to Rafoe here. And swap into Firestaff. Yeah, there we go. So that way we do as much damage as possible to the spinners. Yeah, I got to fix my other menu later. Uh, oh, there's the red one. I was gonna say, I almost three-shot it. That's close. I was gonna Rafoe or Foe, depending on if something was blocking for clarity. Because Foe will do just strictly more damage, of course, on Fonu roll. But, but, it's big damage. I guess technically we'd have two forces up here. I guess I would speed it up. Not as worried about the final wave. Just definitely want to go Ice Scepter plus Rebarda Merge. That way we're doing as much damage as possible. Yeah, sadly I can't assert dominance on St. Million. I don't have a full time blast. Oh, I did the real back? Really? That sucks. Oh, that Resta, though. I cancelled some of the damage. That was interesting. We're gonna get a clean Rebarda there. Again, we do help significantly here. I'm gonna make sure not to hit it, because it's desynced. I'm gonna make sure we get two clean shots. So here I'm gonna go for Rebarda, I think. Yeah, let's just go for it. Yeah, perfect. Team will kill the other things, so as long as they have regular Barda, Rebarda, Mech Gun, St. Million should die pretty quickly here. Or Grants. Grants is actually also pretty good. GG. There we go. Good job, team. So we were at almost 210 XP a second. I'm, I'm sure it'll probably go back up to 200. Yeah, that was real good XP. Dango already 183, climbing up. Yeah, 214, wow. 
Only 6 XP a second off of uh, Dragon resets. That's kind of silly. What a quest. See, so yeah, we'll do one more. And then we'll try a different episode 4 quest. Because honestly, the, the fact that you also get tickets from this, it's like not only is it good, but then you get tickets. It's so unfair. What a quest. We're probably going to be spamming this quest when it's XP week, to be honest with you. So good. And I want drops from this anyway. So one last one of this quest. And then we're going to focus on underground. Which is a little trickier without casts, but not mandatory. As long as we have somebody that can help with Goron Detonators, ultimately. We don't have to worry about Marissa's as much. It's just there are a lot of mixed damage targets. So having Rangers in there is super good. Or Hunters to just one-shot Goron Detonators. So I'm at max accuracy, technically, with the add-ups. So I could slice her fanatic if I wanted to. Maybe. Although I might not have enough ATP, actually. 532 might be too low. I always forget how bad her ATP is, and then I look, and then I feel sad. I still can't believe we're on the Olympic soundtrack still. This thing will never die, chat. We have another 14 songs, holy. It was playing since last session, it's crazy. It never ends. I'll give them this. They put more effort into the soundtrack than the other ones. There are so many more songs overall. And they're not just like 10 second loop. How many more Olympic games? Like four. <laughs> we're, just, we're only in we're only in 2012. We didn't even get to 2020 Olympics or anything. We're so far away from being done with them. I know, there's so many Olympic games. Sonic has an Olympic game problem, I'm just saying. Because there's even like the Winter Olympics and stuff like that. So he'll he'll like double up sometimes in the same year. Like what an actual monster. I think the next one is at least Sonic at the Olympic AA, pretty much. <laughs> I was gonna say, can you imagine the Ace and Attorney game where he's investigating Sonic? <laughs> you get like the spray powder from like the first Phoenix Wright game, and you're like, find evidence, a crime was committed here. They're like, nope, that's not blood, that's chili dog sauce. What's that doing here? Hello, Dorfon. Get Grants. Deleted that enemy. So anyway. Pretty good chance of materials. <laughs> you find you find like one of Sonic's discarded gloves. <laughs> They, lo they love having the gloves as evidence. Get out of here, Babudas. Alright, back to Kapoe stacking. Yeah, somebody shared with me a uh, meme thing for uh, Phoenix Wright. Where it was like how how something along the lines of like how Ace Attorney should really go, and then it was just basically uh, <laughs> Edgeworth versus Phoenix in like a Yakuza style fight, and I'm like, you know what? That's probably a better justice system than what they're doing in the actual game itself. At least there's no supernatural powers at work. <laughs> the justice of the streets beats all. Sadly, I don't even know if that would make... I, I don't... I guess it would shorten cases. 
It's not like the judge listens to evidence in that universe correctly anyway. He's always looking to dismiss the case so early in. Oh boy. Oh, I might as well as use some moons to fix my synchro. Phoenix right, but it's WWE, pretty much. I mean, to be fair, they're they're already bringing weapons to the stand like every other case. Like, how many times in a row has it been like somebody has literally brought up a weapon in front of the witness stand? At least they have to use evidence to all. <laughs> that would be funny. They're allowed to use any evidence in the case in the match. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say. Oh boy. I mean, the game does have an obsession with the stepladder argument. It being a WWE game wouldn't be a stretch at that point. I could see them arguing about it and then they just, one of them just smashes the other with it. Goodbye, satellite lizards. My Arceus Phoenix. Out of nowhere, more importantly. See, I get that reference. I don't get many references, though. Block one. Caliber has found. Parasite Gene Flow. Nice, nice. Again, that'll be Dango at some point. Uh, I probably want that mod material. Ooh, I can't pick it up. Um... I guess I just eat my dye fluids to pick it up. I think that just makes sense. Being more efficient with their space. Dye fluids are okay. Yeah, tri fluids at this point are just so powerful. Given her TP is almost at 3k, which is insane. And she'll definitely pass 3k by the time she hits 200. Can't imagine how high it'll go with the, the TP materials. I'm sure it's something disgusting. Speaking of disgusting, let's go pick up that event egg. Oops. A nice little debuff here. I'm listening to this and I'm like, I don't think Olympics with this song. Like, reminder, we're still listening to the Olympics soundtrack. It's very boss themed. Not what I would have thought in an Olympics game. Oh, we gotta get out of here. Oh, I didn't mean to go away there. That was a mistake. Uh, that's unfortunate. Oh well, time to stack go away. I meant to raw away there, but my bad. Okay, we're gonna gladly go away with the buffered go away, and I guess we'll grant so we face the target and then away him. Yeah, there we go. Fast kill. Okay. We'll reapply buffs. Is it the Olympics itself the giant boss battle? I mean, it's not usually a 1v1. Unless it's like a team boss battle kind of thing. Buff Dango real quick. Some lore. Maybe this music plays when Sonic finally has to take a swimming event. <laughs> the betrayal. Oh, I got hit right as I debuffed. That's unfortunate. Ooh, taking big damage there.
Do we know after the zoo are the problem enemies? We're not going to try to target them. An image of an anime Olympic Sonic show? Oh, no. Lots of event eggs dropping. Congratulations, team. And a photon drop. Nice. So again, even though it's not drop rate week, we're, we're getting pretty good items. So I'm happy with this, if nothing else. Like, there's a steady amount of enemies that we're killing. And that all goes towards drops. So even if we don't get Cannon Rouge, those PDs go towards something nice. Oh, I can't even pick up a photon drop? Uh, goodbye, Skip Doll. That is kind of sad, though, in like two hours or something. Oh, team keeps summoning the zoos early. I'm so sad. I just want to do the thing. Rip. Oh, well. So anyway, I'm going to go in the corner more so I can kill them with uh, debuffs here. Boom, boom. If I'm not towards the center of the room, I can't get what I need. It's okay, it happens. Yeah, the reason if if I'm near the door and I do that, unless I have Blind Divine, I can't debuff them. I know that from doing that way too many times. <laughs> it just like it just doesn't work. So I think the phone movement's out damaging me there if I'm looking at that correctly. I think I'm, I'm doing 590, 599 to 616. And I'm like as optimized as possible. Well, minus some MSD here and there. So I don't think I'll quite hit Phonuman damage, sadly. I definitely never Phonuman speed. But hey, at least I'm putting out the damage. So I'm almost comparable with a level 195 Phonuman. As long as I fast menu here, this will make up some of the speed differences if somebody were mashing it comparatively. Oh, these Rappies are ultra dead. GG. I'm gonna use a little Zalore here to help the team out. A little happy Kofoe down. Oh, team is lingering near them. Let's put another one. And nothing dropped of interest, sadly. I got some power materials. Those are always nice. I do need to reset my Huka seal at some point, so all these are just going towards her. At this point, though, I don't think I have another character to uh, use materials on. So in theory, I could start selling them if I wanted to. Unless I wanted to make another Phonumin outside of the one that we already have. Or a cast, like more rock casts. I do like rock casts. I'm just not sure what ID I would make them at this point, though. So I'm kind of happy with grinding with non-casts in uh, TTF. Brown ID? I don't know about that. Rip satellite lizards. See, team barely has to do anything on Marissa waves. What a beautiful feeling. Those enemies are normally a nightmare if they're left to go uncontrolled. Hopping around, dodging random attacks, annoying freeze attacks, potentially lethal body slams if you're frozen. So lord the group. That's all I could really do. I do have Zon, so I might as well Zond a little bit. It speeds it up. Because I could get basically two casts of Zond in before Grants even lands. And I have a bonus to Zond anyway, and they have a weakness to it. It just kind of works out. And again, that strategy is much stronger in single player than multiplayer. But at least, you know, I have like full screen Resta. And she does have the most MST in the game, so at least she's healing for basically everything. Okay, slow them down a little bit with Fireball, get some debuffs. Back to stacking. Mm 
more event eggs from the team. Nice. So sadly, we didn't get another Cannon Rouge, but hey. You could say we went for it. Yeah, I gotta see if my purple ID character is set up correctly. So I would like a Yashminikov. And or Vices. People do it more for Vices. I do it for the Yashminikov. Vices are pretty strong. Keep up here. Because I'm dead center in the room. This should hit everybody for quite a lot. Yeah, there we go. That saves a lot of time. So good positioning there means we can actually semi-stack with Foes, which is nice. He is so dead. Goodbye. Nice try, Fluid. Nice XP. Uh, try Fluid into Fire Scepter. So yeah, basically if I can Foey Foey into Rafoey, it should be a kill on the spinners. In single player, it's only two Foey, I think, to kill. And the reason we need to use Rafoey is that more often than not, the spinners will block each other. But sometimes we have a clear line of sight, and Foey's very fast, so... We're gonna take a moment to spin around. Also, we separate at the beginning, so the spinners don't immediately clump around all the players. I could probably just Foey this one out of existence if I want to. Somebody beat me to that kill? That's crazy. I almost three-spelled that. Or maybe it was me, I'm not sure. Nah, that was an orange one that died. Crazy. Also, oops, I did ice. <laughs> I was just so surprised somebody outkilled me there. <laughs> I was like, wow, I went foey, 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 but before it could die. Anyway, back to Ice Staff plus Rebarda Merge. Okay, let's go up here. Berserk Heaven Striker makes sense. Because I'm like, that. that is, because I'm doing like a thousand a hit, that's not low. Okay. Yeah, this is like surprisingly one of the few times I can bully them. Because they have no resistances. We get to see the true power of the force, but only on the spinners. Nice, I got the debuff. Ooh, one of them got really desynced. That's unfortunate. Uh, we can still correct this. I'm gonna heal, and if he does anything other than real back... Okay, let's go. Pop one of them. I think we should be able to fix it. Team should be able to adjust to that. We might have to just deal with one more phase. Yeah, I had a feeling. So it, it'll pop up again in the same place, so you could just stay there. Like, that's, that's the worst that kind of happens. Oh, well, now it's just wasting time. Come on. Recognize you're dead. There we go. So we could stay here. We'll just collectively beat this thing down. <laughs> I got regular Barda ready. So I could do some big damage here. Anyway. It prolonged its life by, like, eight seconds. That was fine. GG. Dango hit 184. Congratulations, Dango. Block one. Jade has found one. Heaven Striker. Oh, Heaven Punisher. Nice. Wow, doing Heaven Punisher on Rare Week. Interesting. Ooh, escape doll. Rip. I was gonna say, they're living the grind to do blue ID. The grind is real. So yeah, 210,000 experience, 9 tickets, completely bonkers. So we'll do a couple of purple ID runs. I'm going to bring in another force, but it'll be a Newman. Male. 
don't think I need any of these. Need to put away the add-ups. We're good to go. Oh, I forgot to get rid of HP materials. Ooh. That's gonna annoy me later. He's away. I think that's all I needed. She had Ribard emerge from the beginning, so if I leave it with her, that's fine. Sword. Hand in the quest for cash. Yeah, like a truly optimized new mop up operation three is pretty insane. So we're gonna warm up a little bit to it. We'll go to C Bank four again in case I'm not there already. Yeah, pod's really great for heaven striker runs or quick resets for a rare enemy week. We got our main rare enemy hunts, which is just doing the boss over and over. Let's bring in Waluigi's. So he's level 150 with only 34 hours. Yeah, that seems fair. All right, chat, that checks out. That makes sense. <laughs> he only does high XP quests, so it's all good. And he's not that far from leveling. So his HP could be a problem. We'll figure it out, though. So let's go ahead and do this. So what I'll probably do is... Oh, he already has an Adept on. Interesting. I probably will keep him with the Rappy for MST. I probably don't want a Staff. I actually think I need the Heavenly HP for this quest. I'm gonna bring in two of those and an Adept, maybe? Into Rafoe, Gafoe, and then I don't bother with Rivarda Merge. Yeah, get rid of God Technique for Heavenly, I think is the right call. Welcome, Fasho. Welcome back from the gym. Uh, let's see if this is good enough. So the downside to this quest is it drains your HP constantly. So this is a quest where HP materials are actually very strong. And I feel like for the most part are not a downside. But hey, we're pretty close to leveling. We'll see what happens. So yeah, this quest is extraordinarily enemy dense. I actually prefer Rafoe a little more to Gafoe, as I said before. But it, it just kind of depends. Uh, let's go to Extermination, New Mop Op Operation 3. I believe this is the one I'm looking for. So Purple ID will get Vices and Yashmitikovs from this, which is the main reason you would run it. So when you're not looking for Heaven Strikers, this is a good ult source. I need to make sure my other menus are quick though. Okay, good. He has... He's got somewhat of a fast menu. That's the other thing, because if he doesn't have fast Rafoe, that makes a big difference in clear speed. So, like, these rooms, I think it's better to Gafoe, but where we're in the wide open rooms, I think it's better to Rafoe. Like, that's generally my rule of thumb. So it's kind of hard to swap in between, but I, I just leave Rafoe on. Because there's, like, enough enemies here that it's okay. But then after that, they're too spread apart for it to work successfully, sadly personal opinion. There's also uh, one damaging room uh, when the room is really hazy and there's kind of like a long, almost like a C-shape surrounding an island with a switch. That room also is super, super good to uh, Gafoe in. Yeah, so get ready to take damage. There's not much you can do about it. So like this cu first couple of waves you could in theory Gafoe, but I just prefer Gafoe just for raw damage. So I'll do one safety Gafoe here. See, the problem as I said before, look how far away the enemies are. So it's better just to do as much damage as you can here. Nice leveled up. Do one fireball here. Like, see, those enemies are never going to get hit on time with Gafoe. If they spawned a little closer, it would have been fine. 
The only thing we have to do right now and then is just make sure we babysit HP. So I'll try to babysit HP. That way the team doesn't die. <laughs> I'm the most likely one to die anyway, so I might as well just be the healer. And in between waves, I'll pop like a Gopoe or two. As I said before, they're usually pretty far apart. Okay, let's weaken the satellite lizards here. Excellent damage, excellent damage. Uh, let's blow up the Rappies, I guess. Okay, I believe we gotta go... Is it up or down on the first room? Let's find out real quick. I always forget. It might be down first. Yeah, this looks correct. So this room, if you're really good with positioning, you can run into the middle of it in Gafoe. So like if I ignore this wave and I come into like here-ish, I could in theory Gafoe most of the other waves. So we're averaging almost 236 XP a second, which is insane. So we're just straight up better than the other runs for Dragon Resets. Kind of crazy. So these enemies are super far apart. But if we're lucky, they'll teleport close enough that we can Rafoe a target. That is kind of the downside of the room. But hey, if we're roughly in the center, we should be able to correct it. Yeah, we don't super care about the Rappy sticking around. We can avoid it. We will. I believe our destination is to the left. <laughs> it's been a while since I did the run, so I'm like struggling a little bit to remember. Fire, or the, the healing ring is usually a trap, I just ignore it. Unless you're a cast, there's really no reason to take it. So we take the left path because it's slightly shorter between the two sides. Um, I think we're coming up to the fire ring. This is one where I will probably switch to Gavoe. Not quite yet. We're looking for a room that looks like this on the ground, but it has like a switch in the middle. If I see that, I'm going to switch over to Gafoe Merge, but I think we have one of these first. You know what, actually, I could probably Gafoe Merge here anyway. Yeah, let's stack on this room. I'm going to stack. Because at least every enemy should be in, like, spawn distance. And again, it's just kind of like, my rule of thumb is if they're in a really tight corridor, then the power of Gafoe can actually work. So, like, we could do a little bit of Grand damage here, back to Gafoe stacking. Oh, wait, where is my Gafoe? There it is. They're probably dead after this wave. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, our key thing to look for. We're looking for that one room, and then if we're forced, there's a magic spot we can stand in that works on every wave, and that is, like, the Gafoe room. I th think this is not the Gafoe room. Where is it? No, it is, it is. Okay, so I'm going to pause trick. We're going to get through here. Right where that middle satellite lizard is, we want to spam Gafoe. If we spam Gafoe here, we can hit every wave and stack on every wave. This is like one of the few rooms where I feel like it's irrefutable. Gafoe stacking is actually good. Because the, the spawns are mostly centered around here. So I try to look at the satellite lizard as my visual reference. And as long as I keep stacking it here, we should be good. Because otherwise, they're just, like, really spread out. And you might hit it with, like, a Gafoe or two, but nothing, like, too crazy. Yeah, see that how they teleported into me, too? Excellent. Oh, my HP went to zero. There we go. And I think it's now Rafoe for the rest of the run. <laughs> Enjoyed the Gafoe. We saluted Gafoe. You did your purpose in that room. And some of the mini rooms. But it's back to Rafoe spam. Uh, let's buff Dango. Uh, Striker Child is a good choice here for full screen buffs. Oh, I misspoke. I forgot there was another mini room. Oh well, back to Kofoe stacking. <laughs> Be 
keep up them real quick. Yeah, it's recommended if you ever do this quest, you bring a force, or you have really, really, really high DPS. Because if you are at all taking a long time to clear a room, you'll probably die and run out of resources as a cast. But if you're like in a party of like three casts and like a Ramar, Ramarl for buffs, it's probably good enough. Assuming everybody's near max ATP. Just be aware, it is possible to do this without a force, it's just... You really need to know where to spot where to stand for the Grand Detonators. So yeah, definitely much easier to do as a force, but learnable with the other characters. And for solo force play, this is one of the better quests to play for XP and items as you go along. So we're still averaging like 200 XP a second, and we have like downtime in the quest. Which to me isn't crazy. Yeah, we want to debuff as much as possible. So we'll play more supportive. Do what we can here. And whenever we see a wave about to end, we put a couple Gafoeys out just because. That's the extent of the Gafoey. Yeah, like I did a little more damage there, but not nothing too crazy. Now let's go pick up that event egg before I'm out of range. I believe we have to go to the right of the two doors that are here. So eventually we need to make our way over. Debuff time. What makes it kind of unfortunate is it is a time limit quest, but it is, it's so strong that I think it's like one of the few that's worth learning, like start to finish. Uh oh, we're at sound effects. We almost done with the soundtrack. Wow. I think that might have been it, chat. We did it. We completed the Olympic soundtrack. I'm going to debuff very briefly and find a nice place to stand as I switch soundtracks. Awkward timing for the soundtrack to end, though. Let's do this one. Yeah, look how many raw enemies are here. This is like... This is like Hunter, Ranger Heaven, or even Force Heaven to some extent. There's so many targets. Hunters are like, I can finally partisan everything. If we, let's center ourselves a little more. I wonder if it's worth standing where I'm standing to Gafoe. So we could always experiment with that at some point. Because most of them do spawn roughly centered. Anyway, XP per second, madness. And again, due to the sheer raw number of enemies, this is also not bad alternative for eggs if you don't mind a harder quest. So we have seen literally no rares drop at all. This is so sad. It's a rare week, chat. Where are the rares? <laughs> Rip rares, apparently. Nice try blinking UI. Saw that before you were doing that. Was just wait for people to get closer. Yeah, you can see the see without fighting a single boss, we've killed 134,000 XP and rising worth of enemies. Uh, I guess I could Kafoe in here again. This is a before. I cut like if I see a small room like this, I'll just Gafoe. It's generally worth it. Like there's a room where it's bad. Do a couple more of these. I think the problem is recognizing like what the final wave is. Because there's usually somewhere between like three to five waves here. So I had a feeling that one was a shorter one, so I ended up refoeing after a while. So hey, if anybody needed levels, like we have in Parameter, leveling is Ramar. It's another really great quest for it, even though it's rare item week. So we're finally in the final room. So our goal is to stick to the left all the way through. And there's going to be an annoying amount of Goron Detonators here. And this is where we're going to believe in our Hunter and Ranger friends. So we're just going to try to clear the way. 
Oh, or he'll just teleport to me. That's fine. Fortunately, no more fire rune. And we still have more than seven minutes left. That's a pretty generous amount of time left on the clock. So forces can continue moving forward so we don't have to be near their Gordon detonator. And that'll help us kind of line up for uh, debuffs and potentially Rebarta. That is so unfortunate I got tagged twice there. So we're going to debuff what we can. Because we do have to get in position for the, the final wave. We're going to do some grances here into some die fluids. Walk forward a little more. That way we're able to target with Rafoe. Keep walking forward. We're gonna walk. We're gonna ignore this enemy. We're gonna keep walking forward. Team can help me with the satellite lizards. Slash, I can hit them with this and damage them anyway. If that works. Turn around, nuke those. I think we have one more wave after this. I think it's a double Goron. Yeah, double Goron, I think it's the end. So if we're close, we can Rebarda to help the team out, and then we can just Rafoe the rest if we're close enough, which we are. Yeah, I think that's one of those things where when people see, like, total XP in a quest... Oh, I got a Freeze Laser with 50 hit. I'm so sad, chat. That interrupted my thought. So sad. It could have been so good. It's just not. But anyway. Uh, where people see, like, things are worth, like, roughly the same amount of XP. I just want to be clear. This is one of those quests where the XP is high and the XP per second is high. Like, we ended at 214. So that's better than basically every quest you could do in <laughs> single player, more or less. It's definitely in it's definitely in the upper category. If we ignore the Halloween quests, uh, I would say this is probably top five. Standard quests that you could do. Kind of insane. XP quests are the Halloween quests are on their own tier. That that that's kind of not fair. They're too powerful. But yeah, this is pretty good. I put away one heavenly HP. I will put away a cure paralysis. I don't think I need it for this quest. Tempest first congeal cloak. I don't think it really matters here. So yeah, nice quest, high enemy density. Again, good in drop raid and rare enemy weak. Super solid. So if you're wondering how people level fast, <laughs> Faux Newman doing this single player, eating a million HP materials plus heavenly HPs to survive, the constant fire damage equals XP heaven. Of course, if you're just looking for pure XP, there is Beyond the Horizon. But I figure while it is just rare enemy weak, there's no point to doing that. When it's actually XP only, then maybe we'll we'll do that just to show it off. Otherwise, we're paying 20,000. That gave us 20,000 Meseta. Wait a minute. Wait, that was actually good. <laughs> that just pays for all my tri-fluids. That's not fair. I was expecting to give us like 8k or something terrible. Because, you know, if PSO has a real Meseta issue with quests, to be honest. So we'll do this, I think, two more times. Then we'll probably switch what quests we do. So if there's people that... Potentially, we could go into, like, the RT, TTF, TTF territory. I feel like we got a lot of episode 4 in. We went from about 7.30 to 10 of my time in just episode 4. We still have two more of these to go. Yeah, we don't end up doing any massive attack B on ultimate. When, when it's rare enemy week, we'll do it on very hard because that quest actually has really good drops uh, across the board. You have Jaya's, Ignition Cloaks, uh, Heaven Striker Coats. All those are really good for newer players and even some late game players because Ignition Cloak is like your optimization for uh, forces. So there's some quests, they're good. We just situationally do them. Kind of like we don't spam pod, point of disaster, unless it's like rare enemy week. Like, it's a good quest for what it is, but you have to kind of play to its strengths. Where this quest is so strong, honestly, XP weak, rare item, rare draw. 
The only thing it doesn't get impacted by is rare enemy. This episode four does not have a lot of those. I mean, I guess in theory, you could play it for the zoos if you really want the rare enemies here. But there's not really like a lot of Marissa's to worry about either. Oops. Cure Dango. Interesting Sonic soundtrack so far. Sack a couple Gafoes, but then after that, I'm gonna go back to Rofoe. Yeah, I think like just that first wave is Gafoeable. And eh, after that. Ooh, we're out of range of Dango. There we go. Operation Save Dango's HP. And again, this quest will do a lot of damage to you. So potentially if you have like a foam Oral, for example, she's not terrible for keeping people alive if all you're doing is babysitting. But honestly, Phonuman's still the best choice here. Let's use some Gazond here. Get a team heal going. A lot of healed, I think that would have killed me. Debuff time. Yeah, if we were to pick the other directions just for chat clarity. Uh, where's that luck material? If we go anywhere other than south, it's just items. Which I guess, like, you could do box checks here if you really wanted to. I'm just making sure I check the rappies. Yeah, we'll take extra time looking for luck material. Like, that's, like, that's like one of the few things we should absolutely stop doing what we're doing to go get more. What? Oh... Yeah, I don't have the menu set up. That reminds me, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to set up the control stick because I need to be able to access the technique menu. Or not the technique menu, the equip menu faster. So I think I gotta assign F1s to the right sticks. Actually, maybe I could still do it. No. I can access that menu quickly, which is not bad. Sometimes I need it, just not now. A uh, random glide divine, sure. Not the intended rare, but technically a rare. So we're gonna keep the party healthy. Actually, find material. I'll go pick that up. those rampies though in some ways i want to make sure that they drop stuff and at the same time i'm like i really don't want to go back for them again <laughs> just i don't know if i want that yeah so sadly this character doesn't have like an invincibility mag which is not super hard to trigger on this quest to be honest but sadly that won't save you from the damage over time of the room i wish invincibility helped a little more with that It just stops you from taking physical damage from what I recall. I think the room still hit, hurts you, which is unfortunate. Anyway, we're late to the room, so there's no point to confoying. We'll just do what we can here. Clean these guys up real quick. So we can put out one Gafoe as we wait. Better than nothing. Bowie level 20. Don't think we need to worry about that. Just feeding it a mono mate because I want to get rid of junk. Excellent. So we're going to go back to our Gafoe strategy. So yeah, right where this one is. As long as we're vaguely where this one spawned. This is like the perfect position for us. 
and I'll ignore the first wave on purpose. In single player, I can't really... I mean, I can Rafoe into this position, but it's like, I still gotta take care of what's here. Anyway, back to Gafoe stacking. Yeah, I gotta check my controller setup in a moment. I might be able to put it back to what I had before. So I was doing some very loose experimentation. Okay, set it back to the one that I was using before. So I think it's this will let me swap? Okay, good. <laughs> Don't mind me, just moving and swapping control settings mid, mid stuff. There we go. So I think being able to swap into barriers quickly is good for us. So if I want to, I could just do something like that. But right now, I don't feel a need to swap. Let's finish this room with Rafoe. I need any of those. Switch back to that. Keep up where we can. Spam Rafoe, <laughs> nuke the world, debuff what we can, freeze maybe? I think I'll go with some freezes, that'll help the team more with their accuracy. They can land those heavies consistently. <laughs> or in the case of the Ramar, always be specialing. Oh, I shame killed him with grants, that was rude. I wasn't sure where he was at first, so I just grants randomly. A little nifty trick to retarget yourself. Let's heal... ...in Parameter so he doesn't die. Damn, I could've used a level up refill on TP there. Unfortunate. But some basic armors have dropped. This area is also not terrible for box drops, like in terms of like what weapons can drop. I mean, it's, at least it's underground, so it's like, it's gonna be okay. So you have some chances of 50 hits that are useful. I just don't think you're gonna get like as commonly like the 80 plus percents or whatever. If I remember it's on par with bottom of mines or something like that. And I think the levels beyond this might be ruins. Or it could be level 2. It could be ruins. Which would still be really good. We'll check that in a little bit, I think. If I remember to. But what we can safely say is it's none of the surface quests. The boxes are somewhat worth opening. I'm just not going to go crazy out of my way in this quest specifically for them. Okay, debuff time for sure. Well, I'm almost died, almost died. Got a rest there. Yeah, if we can reduce the damage they deal, our team doesn't have to worry as much. They're not going to get knocked down. They're not going to worry about healing. It's easy clears. Nice. So again, we're, we're peaking over 220 XP. So the other quests, we were ending around 200-ish. This is 20 more XP a second. Downside, can't go for boss rares. Upside, they have different enemy types. So if you want to do surface versus underground, there's purposes of doing each quest. So if all you really wanted to do was do a lot of underground Heaven Striker, for example, this quest is not bad for it. We're doing kind of alt rares at the moment. So we, we were doing at least enough cannon rouge to justify it. 
But as you can see, there's a lot of Gorons, a decent amount of Pyro Gorons, pretty high amount of Goron detonators. So if those have any rares that you're interested in, definitely take a look at the charts. Ooh, so fast. See some dark fluids as we run. I don't know why I lured them. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Most people are not gonna melee these. It's fine. Just satellite lizards. Okay, if we were foe enough, we actually just stun lock the Grand Detonator, which is really funny. Should be GG for him here. <laughs> Definitely. You can tell when the team is caught up with the ATP, but suddenly the enemy just disappears. And now that we stun the zoo, I'm gonna use the zoo to refoe the rest of the room. That way we stun lock him and crowd control. I love the zoo for that. Because he takes okay-ish damage from it, but more importantly, he's kind of like a repositioning indicator for refoes. So if we stop the zoo in certain places, we can hit the whole room, which is nice. I think people sleep on that ability to just refoe those targets. Often they'll serve out they'll often outlast a single wave. So if other waves are coming in, they're still targetable and you can punish them immediately while still stunlocking the zoo. We see that a bit more in like the massive attack B, where we stunlock the zoos while just killing the rest of the room. But there's a little bit of it here. Oh no. We rolling around at the speed of sound. I still cannot believe how fast this quest is going. So we average a little over 224 XP a second. Ridiculous. Let's see, 174,000 XP. Really good. XP week, you can make that number probably touch 300 a second if you're solo Fodu mid. Mm. Okay. I think it's time to switch up what we're doing. We gave episode 4 an honest run of almost 3 hours. Let's spare chat a little bit there. Let's do a little bit of... I guess respective tomorrow blue ID? I'll bring in a Hue roll. And we'll, we'll have a force potentially with uh, a Brenigma here, so that way I can focus on DPS. I'm going to see if I could get away without using a Dark Flow, if I just switch to uh, Vices. I'm going to switch back to Z-Bank 1. So we'll do at least two respective tomorrows, and then we'll probably do a couple TTFs to wrap up. So I think we got some pretty good item variety. Cannon Rouge, Heaven Striker, technically Galatine, uh, Yashmitikov, 9000 M's, Vices. Sadly, we didn't see all of those items drop today, but we did see a couple Cannon Rouges at least so far. Now we're going to go for Yun Chang on ult, 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 ult chance of dropping uh, and Parasitic Gene Flow. Oh, she had the gear assault. Uh... Yeah, I think the important thing is if you're going for some of the stronger rares of the game, even if it's kind of an off week, you still put in some work towards it. It's not like it's impossible for it to draw. 
Yeah, this character leveling will be nice. She's still got a while to go for max ATP. And eventually her having uh Oh, we're doing... Um... Actually, why did I pick this one? I'm sorry, chat. That's a good question. Let's slash lobby. I'm like looking at it. I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, I could do a blue ID episode one. I don't feel like it though. I was thinking TTF and then I'm like, uh, I don't, blue ID sadly doesn't get red ring, which is why this character could be kind of annoying to level normally. Like I, if I really wanted the shield component at blue ID, it's technically good. You technically get Jaya on the way there. I just don't feel like doing Jaya episode one. Doesn't really make sense. Is there any other fun blue ID stuff? Like technically it gets Heaven Striker, I think now. And uh ruins. Not that people should really farm it for that. Yeah. I guess people will do Gil Chicks, Jaya, Mines sometimes. Yeah. Three, two, one, go, nice. Oh, actually, technically we started a little later, so I said three hours earlier. It was like three hours, th or two and a half hours. I forgot we had a delayed start. Oh, well. So we're gonna switch to probably just last one. We're not gonna fall for the blue door trick. I'm like, listen, <laughs> we're going to temple. I know it's blue door. Everything else beyond that, no idea. It's not too bad. We're not a happy little Gafoe for the Rappies. Yeah, so thanks to the Force, I'm able to combo kill a little better. So that's kind of her problem. If she's the only person buffing, she's just like slightly shy of killing. Some of that's a gear issue. Some of it's just not being max ATP. Yeah, Demons is pretty strong here. Wow, that damage is insane. Please don't freeze me. Oh, team hitting with the Demons there. Nice. Goodbye, enemies. Yeah, I do feel like the Hunu World is finally starting to feel a lot better. She's another character where a lot of people were saying like she's one of the stronger solo characters, and I'm like, I haven't been feeling it yet. She she is getting better now that she is Dark Flow. She is definitely stronger, but. Just don't think I leveled as easily. I just feel like when it comes to at least clears, I still think forces are some of the easiest. When it comes to late game clear, I think this character will start to shine a bit more. That that early clear was a little gross. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not bothering to shoot them, I'm just going. Yeah, I feel like she hit more of a rough patch than the Raw Marl did, comparatively. And kind of like the Raw Marl hit like the cliff of difficulty. But once he scaled it, it was all downhill from there for the enemies. Ooh, a Venag, nice. Yeah, I think thanks to the shifter, I'm combo killing most of these. That's not too much worse than using demons. Or hell, I mean. Although, demon mech. 
be quite something. We're going to equip our Jaya, which will be doing huge damage with a Force. Although, I guess initially I should probably keep less one out. Alright, let's see. Are you going to go be- are you going to be on the right side? Be a glitchy teleport or the north side? Let's find out. Survey says north side this time. Okay, pop this segment for later. I can get some guaranteed Jaya damage next time. We'll dance to the music. Got <laughs> nothing better to do. Oh, I went to swing. Denied. Ah, uh, anti power. Oh, I see. They got slightly more HP than I'm doing damage. You see what I mean? Like, I'm just like a little bit off. Ugh. One more ATP. Max level might help. Red ring will definitely help. Speaking of definitely help, I'm gonna do some damage to this boss. You can see when I die, it loses like 5,000 HP. Okay, we'll do some damage here. I think it's dead. I don't think I'm gonna use Jaya special. I think it's just outright dead here. And that's kind of the nice thing. If people weaken the little plates. Jaya just does so much damage. So I popped one of the plates early, so that way when it's near its head, so I could get some guaranteed damage on the boss. Do roll a shell. Interesting. Oh, here we go. Who will be the closest to being the right spot on the raft? So I think we look at the bolt, and then I think we put our right foot on the bolt, but we line up just right. I think I like where Imperimeter is relative to me. <laughs> like, we got nothing better to do. We have like 20 seconds to rearrange this. This is so stupid. Unfortunately, the camera keeps rotating. There we go. I think I'm lined up now. So it's okay to be a slightly to the left. I think being in the middle between the two bolts might be too far to the left. Now if we hold forward, let's see how close we are. I think I almost hit it. Oh, I would have been shy. Would have been shy. I needed one more step to the left. So close. <laughs> That's our new mini game while playing Respective tomorrow. Who could be the closest to dead center on the warp? So at least the bolt puts us in. Oh, guilty light. At least the bolt puts us like really close, so we don't have to make a lot of adjustments. But yeah, maybe I do have to put my foot completely off the right bolt. So maybe centered between them is better. Yeah, maybe. Try to remember that for the next time. Yeah, I'm gonna hope that uh, with Charge Vulcan, I can burst the dragon boss when it goes to fly. So fortunately, we have a ranger here to hit through the walls. We have kunai potentially to go infinitely up. So if we do have like switches that are exposed, but just not in a wall. We do have some options to deal with it. But, uh, yeah. Rain ranger Supreme. I don't think we have quite anything that clips through there. Technically, I could also use Rambling May for that, I guess. But I, I don't think it'll go through walls. Okay, let's see where the broken, janky Del Saber jump goes. Oh, it didn't hit me this time. That's good. Anyway, tell this Del Saber to die real quick. I only have a 53% chance of landing my first shot. That's crazy. This is why we need Red Ring for accuracy. 199 ATA. Still barely a 50-50 to hit that enemy. And that's also the importance of uh, getting hit percentage weapons. So if Chad is wondering if it's worth getting the 50 hits sometimes, it's like, do you really want a 50-50 a normal attack? I don't think so. Okay. So we're going to be a, a little more reliant, I would say, on Unparameter for the bazooka in because I don't have Dark Flow, but... I should be able to do a lot of damage with Charge Vulcan. Sadly, we can't debuff this boss. Also, seriously.
Uh, we're looking to do big damage here. Yeah, that was pretty close. So we could sometimes get away without get away without using dark flow as long as we have like a charge weapon and we land heavy special special. Uh, it should generally be fast enough. So dark flow is not mandatory to kill the boss. It's just for clarity. It just helps if you just don't hit the damage, which can happen if you don't crit or uh, shenanigans happen and you don't multi-target. Rip that enemy. I did not bring a hell gun, but that's fine. I think with shift to 30, we should be fine damage wise. We should be able to combo kill whatever we look at. Close. If I didn't whiff one of the hits, that would have combo killed. Darn that 73% accuracy. Maybe I do have to use charge Vulcan here just for the accuracy. Yeah, that's working better. Tell that trap to get off me. Stop it. Must have shot too early. Someone misses in there. I'm like, uh, I think normal should hit that. See, so yeah, at least with the uh, Vulcans, with the 50 hit, I'm able to consistently land every hit. There's all that super matters here. And if I feel like I'm, it's not going to kill, I can just quickly pop a charge. So again, like you don't technically need hell, but it it does speed it up. It does mean like potentially with a really high hit that characters that have good accuracy but no ATP can participate. Or if you got S ranks, Rangers just kind of delete everything. Kind of hard to compete with that. Oh, nice me good, love it. <laughs> this is like one of the few quests I'll bring in God Technique with the force because I'll just be like you know what I need level 30 me good there's no substitute you need the extra four percent potentially wow that did some big damage from the group I almost got to hit it before I got held it was close it's a good effort yeah we're seeing vices being used by Dango Good choice here. Parameter hitting 166. Forgot to congratulate in Parameter. The levels today are real. Oh, so if every special had landed there, that would have been 2,000 damage just to the B. Damn, we need that red ring so bad. Need better voices at some point. What hit percentage are those voices, Dango? Let us know. Get rid of you. 35 hit? Oh, okay. I was gonna say, I had I had like a 30 and I think a 25 I could have given, but I think yours is better. Yeah, fortunately percents don't matter as much. It's more the accuracy. Enemy got deleted. Yeah, see, we're combo killing with Vulcan. Thank you, accuracy of Vulcan. Uh, this is another battle that's a little awkward for this hunter. That's fine. So we're gonna believe in the Zalor. So if everybody stands still, we won't get hit. So once this thing gets Zalord, we're gonna believe in Cannon Rouge. And then maybe we'll get some pot shots with uh, Last Swan, maybe. We're basically, as hunters, we mostly have to wait for it to land unless we have Dark Flow. And we could do like one swipe at it. I think I hit it once. Better than nothing. You've seen close with 40 hit. Welcome to getting trolled by the game. Oh, miss, miss, miss. I am hitting it a little bit, but... Without uh, something like Frozen Shooter, I don't think I can hit it consistently. I have no idea how I dodged any of that, but we'll take it. 
Oh. Stupid lightning attack. I love it's a little shadow twirling. Look at it go. To no one's surprise, I did not get Gal Griffin's wing. <laughs> I chat, I have I have literally gotten more red rings on stream than Gal Griffin wings. <laughs> so sad. Why? Why is this item so hard to attain? I don't understand. It's actual madness. I could do, like, two TTFs to every RT, and it would still statistically be more likely that I would get the RT item first. So sad. Imperial pick, there we go. So yeah, surprisingly no Jaya so far going through. Got some chances of Yun Chang here, I guess. Oh, actually, I should just use Charge Vulcan still. Oh, I saw this miss, miss, miss. It's down here somewhere. So yeah, we need the accuracy to land on that creature more often. Oh, I can't shoot through the corner. That's unfortunate. I tried. Oh, the freeze. Got him. Checkmate. <laughs> Uniroll freeze. Put it in the work. You're only max secure feed. Oh, no. Comfy feet is here. Oh, it has a shield up. There we go. I'm still combo killing. Thank you, Charge Vulcan. So yeah, I gotta, I gotta learn to upgrade off a of last swan to this. It's mostly the accuracy. It's not even the necessarily the damage. Soxetane, pretty much. I just hope every day we do this quest. There's never an item I want from those boxes because I still have no idea how to get to them. <laughs> I can be real with you, Chad. I have no idea how to reach those. I don't think I've ever tried. I was over to the side more. That is big damage from Dango. Dango sliced and diced that one robot up. GG. 50 hit Berserk Gladius. That's actually not bad. I don't think you would trade anything for it unless it had more hit, but it wouldn't be bad for a new player necessarily. There we go. I participated. Yeah, if I had a Girasol with hit or a Vivian with hit, I would probably be going in a bit more with her. Oh, music pause. It did. Block three. Ooh. I got run over. I deserve that. I think on blue ID, that's a cycle wand attempt, if I remember correctly. <laughs> From the Dell Beater. It's been a while. I don't look at their charts too often. There we go. Just got Mag Blast, which is perfect. Because we will need that. Oh, that's right. I got to back up more. Bye, box. Like how it did the sound effect, like it's opening the door, but it didn't. There we go. Rings and flows dropping like a... Yeah, it is rare item week, so I expect it to come up every now and then. More parasitic gene flow than I would say TTF, but TTF is more popular, so maybe it balances out. Look at that, I combo killed. Uh, I should probably kill the Morphos if I can. As long as we don't look at them, they won't attack us. 
So as, as long as we face our camera away, more specifically, we should be good. Though it could be kind of annoying, depending on where they spawn. Like that one hallway where they're on either side, you have to kind of like look sideways and then figure it out how to go from there. Look at the other side of the room. I'll let team get these. Wow, getting body blocked by the Rico feels terrible. That's okay, I deserve to get punched there. What we're gonna do, we're gonna rely on the team. Seriously, did you teleport in front of me specifically to stop me from doing that? So rude. Anyway, we're gonna do a quick little box check because I remember they're here. Okay. I mean, it is seabed, it is worth checking the boxes. So, I might as well open those boxes. Ooh, Dango living on the edge there. Team's just making sure they get their meter. Plus, I don't need meter anyway, so it's probably faster if we do that. Oh, what a tease, photon drop. So yeah, basically we just need two people at least with the mag blast. I'm one of them. And everybody else at least needs enough to donate. Parameter going in. Might as well as regen my TP. So fortunately for this boss fight, even without Glide Divine, even even my Zalora can hit this boss at the beginning. It's okay, so I'm gonna use twins. So I'm just gonna say using twins. Give team a little bit to react in case they're typing. And let's go. There we go. This should be big damage. So yeah, what basically is as, as long as the lore is being applied, this boss is done. And the only other thing we have to make sure is just don't hit the second phase until it looks around, or else we get punished. I think that's supposed to be a countermeasure to stop you from just cheese killing the boss, but honestly, I don't think it helps. It doesn't help with the new damage patch anymore. It still dies before it does anything. So if I had a more dis- like I could potentially kunai this boss while we're waiting if I had it with me. So debuff time, there we go. Oh, I, I whiffed pretty much all my heavies, my bad. Thought I could land it a bit more consistently than that. I'm gonna last swan just for normals there. I needed more of the range than I needed the accuracy there. That was unfortunate. I went to normal heavy heavy. And uh pretty much everything whiffed. Oh well, we'll get another chance here with Vulcan. So fortunately at least if you have like a close range weapon like uh vices should be good. Yeah, I saw the huge damage from the Berserk. So that that made up for our our whiffs. And by ours, I mean mostly mine. So yeah, once this boss gets a lord, we're just gonna wait a little bit. Hopefully it dies. Let's take a look. Attack. There we go. <laughs> like, it even has, like, a built-in anti-cheese method. It just doesn't matter anymore. GG. Damage patch too good. See, normally these Vulcans would be canceling out the damage of, like, a Heaven Striker, which makes it a bit awkward. That, that's how the normal gameplay behaves, but now we don't have to worry about that. We aren't cheated out of our damage. Bobber had a little bit to the music. I'm gonna say, by the lack of excitement, we did not find a parasitic gene flow. Get another attempt for Dango. So yeah, that'll put us a little closer to 1130. 
think we went okay time wise. It just feels much later. I think that's where I'm I'm feeling work. <laughs> even even after sleeping right before the stream. I was like, damn, I needed more sleep than that. We're gonna get double S rank? Yeah, yeah. Can't believe my eyes. Mm-hmm. See, I think we bring enough to do okay here. It is a shame that her accuracy is so bad that she basically needs out of full time. At least she's only six away from capping ATA, I guess. It'll be nice to actually free this up for something else. Like potentially a V5 unit permanently, for example. That'd be pretty big. Yeah, she's using Heavenly Power Centurion as much damage as she can. While also capping luck. So we'll do another one. You know, sadly, I wanted to do the follow alerts for the people that just joined uh, between streams, but uh, to no one's surprise, Stream Elements is not behaving correctly. It still only shows me notifications from yesterday. So I would like to give Daddy for Show a proper shout out when it fixes itself. I believe there is one other individual. Be right back a minute, no problem. Put a little fireball out here. Go back for that power material, which I think is always worth going back for. Yeah, the downside to this quest in particular, other than it having like awkward padding, is uh, we can't really put telepipes down. Fortunately, we will stay in rooms for a little bit, so that'll give time for uh, Edward Enigma to catch up again. But just be aware, there are some quests that just lock it out. I'm just gonna go for the hill dealt here so we fight the next wave as soon as possible. Goodbye. I mean, I could just Jaya them, I guess. Feels a little unnecessary, but... Poor Gunnir, actually. Uh, this should be fun. Do a little fireball down. Do a little fake force action there. Just to guarantee that we get our abilities. They died so fast. I, I barely got to see them. I love that if we just all have Vulcans, there's not enough enemies that really spawn at once. We just all focus on a single enemy and it would still clear their waves. Oh, Edward Enigma is back. Welcome back. A little fireball out for the Rappies. Oh, is that the end of the soundtrack? Question mark? It is the end of the soundtrack. Hmm. Okay, so what's after that? Oh, no. Chad, I got bad news for you. You can probably guess what that bad news is based off of what we're about to listen to. Why are there 163 songs in this game? <laughs> oh my gosh. The soundtrack volume is going up and up. Holy. 
That is a very long soundtrack. Well, anyway, we're back in the Olympics. <laughs> Listen, that is some intense Olympicking. Ing, 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 ing. <laughs> like, hold. What? What? What is the name of this one? Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games, Sochi, 2014. So there you go, Chad. It never ends. <laughs> Oops, all Olympics. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Glitchy teleport? Oh no, it's behaving itself today. No glitches. We'll do what we can to weaken it here. I hit the point that's like a little to the left of it. There we go. We're doing some actual damage to the boss there. Healed the team. Yeah, there we go. That's my purpose to TP. Force can focus on doing stuff. You just spam rest it. I got nothing better to do until it beaches. Feel targeted by this boss. I'm not gonna lie. Cure everybody. How many Sonic and Living games are there? I think we counted. I think it was six. Yeah, the answer is too many for sure. <laughs> there is an insane number. We're not even at 2020, Chad. Like, we're we're not even remotely done with the Olympic Games. There's gonna be a million of these. Uh, let's see if we could do some big damage here. All right, we did huge damage, GG. I think I saw four crits from me. So if we hit four times and two of them crit, we're doing 6,000 to the boss. Just straight up, unless the plate is blocking it. Which is very silly. Speaking of silly, it's time for our Olympic competition. Can we line up <laughs> with the right bolt? It's this one. Feels like 13, the soundtrack never ends. I think it's like centered here. In please. <sighs> Getting the camera, the camera angle just likes to like rotate. It's so annoying, please stop that. There we go. I think I'm off center still. Please fix the camera, I'm begging you. There we go. I think this is good enough. Yeah, let's use closest. Ooh. Oh, I'm slightly... Oh, I'm slightly misaligned. Oh, I lost the competition. Stupid camera. I knew that was going to get me. I was in the right position. The camera just did not cooperate. So it is between the two bolts, I guess is the quick answer. So that's not a bad visual cue then. <laughs> to minimize the number of times you need to go left right. This enemy is so dead. I'm hoping we at least see a Jaya before we finish this. It is kind of silly we've been playing Blue ID and we've not even seen like a zero hit Jaya drop between all of these areas. We're starting to go into the unlikely territory of not seeing one. Like, if we were to do a third RT and not see it, I would actually call shenanigans. Especially during Rare Week. Oh, well. Let's see, where will Dell Saver jump today? Will somebody get hit stupidly? Let's watch. Oh, it behaved itself. Using a little Barda there just to slow it down. I could have rebarded maybe instead, but I think I gotta fix my spell list a little bit. Let's do that now, actually. That's eight. Should probably be eight. Make this. Eight. Sorry about that chat. Yeah, there we go. Now it makes a little more sense to me. I want my raw techniques and medium techniques together. Helps with box clear. Is I'm more likely to use Rifoi for box clear than anything else, so not needing to press extra buttons for that is kind of nice. 
But anyway, let's go back to Charge Vulcan. I didn't get invincibility again. I actually have to wait here. This is kind of annoying. If I walk forward in flame, it's okay. Shock is kind of bad, and freeze is basically insta-death if I walk forward, so I'm gonna wait. That's why I'm not going into that. No way. I would probably be the person to die to that. I guess it's gonna slam, knock me down. That's fine. Do whatever you want. Yeah, take that. <laughs> that like an actual deletion of the boss. Thank you, Charge Vulcan, with shift to level 30. That saves a lot of time. But hey, we had one non-Olympic soundtrack play, and it was like 15 songs. I'm honestly wondering if there's more Sonic Olympic games than there are mainline games. <laughs> like, honestly thinking about it right now, I'm like, the, uh, there are, are a lot of Olympic games. If we can find the Winter Olympic ones in particular, there's a lot. Can you imagine if that's how somebody knew Sonic? They're like, oh yeah, that Olympic game. And they wouldn't be wrong, sadly. <laughs> Where's timeline, says Diggy. Oh no. Oh, that double freeze though. That helps with accuracy. Bearish. Living a time lower, that's a very real possibility. I want to know. It would tilt people off the face of the planet for sure. A lot of live a lot alive Akus, but still no Jaya's. Go away. There we go. Dodge this. <laughs> so how's it going, Tiggy? We've been going strong. I'll we'll probably do a few TT after wrap up because I'm feeling tired, but I'm happy. We still did at least a solid three hour stream and counting. Oops, insta deathed. I guess I could check for hell. I'll do the hell cleave check, actually, since I don't think anybody did it last time. You know, Tiggy, is is that show worth watching? Yeah, give me the honest opinion, Tiggy. The the other show was like back then it was kinda eh. Like the theme song, 11 out of 10. Main show, depends on the episode. Or some weird ones. I saw they were bringing back Morph, question mark. I never ended up finishing the 97 series. But I, I did watch like the first 20 or so episodes. It's a must watch, interesting. I did say they brought back the theme song again, and I was just said before, that was honestly one of the best parts of the, the show. I was very much a Gambit Rouge fan. I was very much not a Cyclops Jean Grey fan. So every time I focus on them, I'm just kind of rolling my eyes. Like, okay. There we go. We did the Hell Cleave check. Nope. <laughs> Almost did the Hell Cleave check. Then I got checked in the face. There we go. Yeah. I remember they were trying to get around uh, what they could say on cartoons. So I think they never called like Mr. Sinister a vampire, for example. So those kind of interesting criteria. <laughs> he's like, lit he's in vampire and everything but name, for example.
Oh no, is this one of the cuts where they loop the song forever? Oh, okay, it's only a two minute, okay. <laughs> I was worried we are gonna listen to like a six minute main menu theme. There we go. Uh, well, I'll check it out, Ziggy. I know people that have it. I don't think I paid Disney. I'll just watch it with them when I get a chance later. What is going on here? Goodbye, Gal Griffin. Wow, he died with the music. That kind of works. <laughs> I almost feel like going back and checking. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I feel like checking how many of these runs I've done and not received a Gal Griffin wing. I'm really curious, chat. I've still, both online and offline, never received one. There's a 50 hit ray gun identified, but unfortunately it has fire instead of something useful. Don't really feel like playing with a 50 element ray gun for that. So sad, chat. So just think, the Gal Griffin wing is the same exact odds as Parasitic Gene Flow. Shake your head. Nice of an egg. Okay, well, I'll give it a watch, Tiki. I I do like a wa I do watch like a lot of superhero shows kinds of things. Like I'm not a I'm not afraid of watching Marvel and DC. I'll consume a lot of shows potentially as I do other things. Though I don't have a lot of time while we're doing the special events in PSO, unless I watch it during like my lunch break or something. Since basically every day is streaming. <laughs> I have like an hour and a half, I think, between work and here, and usually that's spent cooking dinner. He'll race me for wing? I mean, I've technically had like an 80 game head start. I, I just don't think it's happening. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could beat me. It feels like a fever dream. The animation did look good in it. And as I said before, I was... I, I did somewhat... I like the show sometimes it depended on what the episode was i know i enjoyed a lot of the ones that involve cable for example so we'll see when we go into those i vaguely recall bishop I always like in the X-Men show, they're like, I'm gonna go back time and fix go back in time and fix things, and then usually by the end of the episode they're like, oh no. <laughs> they just they just make everything so much worse. It's every time. Every time in the X-Men. They never learn. Yeah, I know a lot of people were Jubilee fans, and she's not really in a lot of the other media. She had a very brief cameo, I think, in the live action ones. From what I recall. Hmm. Jubilee and Beast were some of your favorites growing up. I don't know I don't know if Beast really clicked with me. I would have to go rewatch it again. I, I was definitely very much Rogue Gambit for sure. That much I remember. I like their dynamic a lot better than uh, Scott Summers and Jean Grey. Get out of here, Recon. I know some people are very much into Wolverine. <laughs> the very angry character. By Rico Box. Ooh, another version of the same song. There we go.
Actually, why have I been here? I don't have hell. Let's just leave. <laughs> I'm better suited in the next room. At least I could box check or something. Yeah, I'm curious if they ever go, like... They... I don't think they really touch upon it in, like, the movies or the cartoons. Except maybe some of the uh, later set cartoons. Like, like Scott is not a good... Cyclops is not a good character, just for clarity. Which I always find very interesting, learning about all, this, all the horrible things he does in the comics. I'm curious how much of that will end up in, uh... This is it before the new X-Men show. He is usually in the wrong, like, 90% of the time. It's actually kind of insane. Dodge to that. I'm just hoping if... if I'm assuming they brought back Storm, but I'm hoping if Storm is there... I know she has claustrophobia, but... Some of those X-Men 97 shows were just kind of ridiculous. I just feel like she got bodied instantly. Oh, I'm only at 97, my bad. I thought it was at 100. Like, she is a cool character, but man, sometimes... I'm just like, come on. <laughs> anyway, using twins. It did feel like the early writing was trap her in a box every episode. I'm not sure if they got better as the seasons went on. Yeah, she is supposed to be one of the most powerful mutants. I want to see it. I want to see it in the cartoon. a little bit of the last hit there yeah it's kind of like it like it wasn't even that she like passed out per se it's just that she always just ended up in a situation where they're like they're in a warehouse fighting sentinels and then she'll just get in a box like at some point she will be in a box whether it's like a cargo crate and sometimes the space isn't really even that small and that's where i got annoyed like it's one thing if she got like trapped under something or like you know, like, she she's in, like, the pipes or whatever, because she gets smashed into something. But sometimes, like, she's in, like, a literally, like, massive warehouse in, like, a multi-story tall, tall, uh, tall crate, excuse me. And she'll still, like, freak out. I'm like, seriously? I want to root for this character, but come on. You gotta give me a little something. I'm like, I feel like there's times where she's just casually in buildings and she doesn't have an issue with it, but like, like, oh no, the crate is closed, it's all over. She's not gonna do anything for the rest of the episode. It's such a shame. I feel like it was kind of, like, I under I respect it to some extent, but it definitely felt more like a, like a cop-out on certain episodes, especially the early ones. I'm like, oh, she can't, where, where's her thing where she just like uses the gust of wind to like open the container and have her save herself or something? That's what I want to see. Oh. Rip, no parasitic gene flow. I guess we could do one more of these into TTF. Oh no, an Among Us thing. Yeah, we'll do one more of these into two TTF, I think, and that'll end the stream. Here we go, the little chow making noises. 
Yeah, like I like I would totally get it if she, like she's fighting Magneto and he like wraps her in something like, you know, those are the kinds of things like I would absolutely believe, especially if you had that issue. But then there's other times I'm like, oh, come on. I'm like, you're so powerful. There's just a certain point where suspension of disbelief does not occur. Nice, this character will finally hit level 167. Yeah, I only vaguely recall some of the X-Men plots. It's been a long time since I watched it. I know, I think her, like, main villain was, like, the Shadow King or something. If I remember correctly, like, trying to possess her body, I think. Question mark. It's been a long time. I just know I, I went on to watch a little bit of X-Men Evolution, and I got really disappointed when they redesigned the characters. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't think I'm a fan. I think I did like uh, the one that was after that. I think it was like Wolverine and the X-Men, I think it was called. That one was nice. Got to see characters that were generally not in the show, like uh, Polaris, for example. And see more of the dynamic where he goes to... Ooh, what's it called? Is it Genosha? With Magneto. Rip Lily. Never mind. I aim randomly. Chat cleaned it up. We're good. <laughs> That's all that matters. Take that. enemies are so dead. Goodbye. Wow, killed in two hits. Oh, charge Vulcan, you're so powerful. <laughs> I like the burst damage from Dango and I combined. Oh no, I just reminded myself of Captain Planet when I said that. That was definitely a show. Let's get out of here with- the oh, Arlen died instantly. it's earth fire wind water heart they always do the same order every time i'm convinced if they killed the person that heard of the earth ring they would just never be able to do anything <laughs> like it, it it has to be that order there's there's no other order i don't recall a single other time in the show they did a different order and then i want to say what was it mati with the person with the heart power his ability is so broken He's usually the one that ends up solving the problem of the show. Like, we have, like, Hothead Wheeler. And then I want to say one of their names is Laika. Might have been the water person. They don't tend to do much. They they tend to be in the cause of the conflict. 
and or they're arguing with each other and then you know Mati kind of just cleans house every episode Some of those, <laughs> I mean, the villains are quite something in that show, for sure. I'm trying to think who my favorite one was growing up. I think I was just mostly confused about, uh... oh, I don't remember her name. They're all like puns on pollution, that much I remember. But uh, the short blonde hair woman, I think with the white streak in her hair. She has like the computer howl that she like hits on all the time. I never understood that growing up. I'm just like, but I'm like, but he's a computer. I don't understand. Or me. Get out of here, Barbara Ray. There, there were some really weird episodes in that show. I, I recall like bits and pieces of them. But it has been a very long time since I've seen it. Oh, that Barbara Ray got annihilated between Excalibur and Jaya. I know there's one episode where basically the plot was they were on an island and they were looking to basically, I think, duplicate things, but some random villager accidentally eats it and they begin to duplicate and then they eat the entire village worth of food <laughs> basically they starve the village i'm like that is the plot of the episode or there's the wild ones where it's like uh they go into the cave and then there's like the the neanderthals are there and all sorts of weird things it's just something else that show, that show itself is a fever dream, you can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> Some of those plots... I'm just like, hmm... I think the only one where I thought it explored more interesting themes growing up was like, what happens if they all gave up being the Planeteers? I don't recall what the initial rift is, but it goes into like, where are they now kinds of things. They see how much Wheeler messes up the future. I'm assuming it's Wheeler. He, he causes nothing but trouble in that show, I'm telling you. He needs to take notes from the other characters. <laughs> but I think it was like him from the past ended up in their future or something like that. Because he broke up the Planeteers. What a troublemaker. Got to hear Golgiski. Oh. Oh, somebody hit the switch or something. I guess they were curious what it did. <laughs> respect of tomorrow does not respect the player. Oh, they split. Oh, well. Pick up some money. Come on, level up. I'm so close. I need a thousand experience. Well, 1.4 thousand. It's possible. We got a lot of kills to go. A couple of these enemies, actually just for the XP. I don't normally hit them, but I think I actually want the XP this time. 740, so close. That's that's a heartbreaker amount of XP to go. We still have the Barans. But I don't know if it'll be enough with this room, unless I hit the dub checks. Oh, chat tried to help me a little bit with the XP there. I think that we're gonna be shy. Heartbreaker, 137. So close. I think I didn't get XP from the, the guild checks on the side, so I didn't level. So sad. Rip that level up, I guess. Oh, I finally have invincibility. I'm glad the game remembered that I should have that. <laughs> How generous of the game.
Ooh. Didn't get as much damage as I was hoping there. There we go. Cleaned it up with Cannon Rouge at least. Oh, I got double hit. That was rude. Rip my HP. Well, time to level. One level closer at last to Red Ring. I got more defense than ATP on my level up. That's kind of sad. But hey, damage is damage, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Power material there. Yeah, I, I kind of remember watching like the wildest shows like they their plots made no sense. G.I. Joe had a lot of plots that did not make sense. Those are like unironically some of my favorite things to go back to. Both some of them are actually good episodes and some are so bad that they loop around into just being amazing. I'll still always remember the episode where they somehow time traveled. And it's all okay, because don't worry, Sergeant Slaughter just happens to know ancient Greek. <laughs> you need to just figure everything out. It's it's all good. <laughs> yeah, 20 minute toy commercials, exactly. They were something. Oh, there's a Jaya at last. Wow, that took a lot of RTs to get to a Jaya. Those were some wild ones. And I think they also had a kind of thing where, like, the Egyptian gods were real. If I remember correctly, they, like, act, they enter the tombs and then, like, the gods punish them for it. I'm like, wait, take that other religions. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! was taking notes furiously that day, apparently. Yeah, that's why I was kind of laughing. That one definitely predates you, yo. Unless the manga is around longer or something weird. That is an early, early 90s show, if not 80s. Get out of here. Don't need anything there. Yeah, let's do the Hell Cleave check. Into the side path we go. A giant with 20 hit. That's okay. I guess I could keep it for other players. Sadly, it rolled with machine percentage, which isn't the most useful percent. Uh, you know what? I think I'll avoid it then. Honestly, I'm going to do the hot take. I don't think the original Yu-Gi-Oh! is worth watching. I know a lot of people like it, but man, that show was kind of whack. The voice actors were, like, super good. Like, they sold their roles. Like, Kaiba is a classic voice actor. Just the show itself was terrible. Just... It's kind of one of those things. It's like, I, I think it's oversold. Take the luck material. Yeah, dual monsters. Oh, Season Zero is also a trip. That one, that one is very funny, unintentionally. I remember in, like, the, the manga version of it, they had the uh, vicious gang of yo-yoers going around and yo-yoing people. Like, you, it's just hilarious. Go, just go, go look at that. They treat it as, like, a serious threat in a world where a small kid pulls out an SMG and, force, and forces you to do gotcha games. <laughs> I'm just like, the yo-yo is the problem. I'm just like, what is going on? This thing is so, so out of there. Yeah, see, exactly. Like, see, those, those are entertaining. Maybe not for the right reasons, but, you know, you can find some enjoyment with them. Oh, miss, miss, miss. Need to get a different weapon for this phase. Yeah. 
a show that I liked basically for the first half, and then I feel like it kind of dropped the ball in the second half. 5Ds. 5Ds was the best Yu-Gi-Oh, hands down. No contest. Oh, man, I'm getting bodied randomly. Sorry, team. I got absolutely stunlocked by that lightning attack, and I died instantly. Do I still have a skip doll? Oh, somebody revived me. It didn't matter. Yeah, that was... That was annoying. I literally just got lightning into lightning into lightning. I didn't do anything that battle. Rip me. Yeah, five five D's Japanese version out of out of this world. My material. I was expecting Dango to write. I won the race. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I kind of felt it. I thought Dango had that one. But no Gal Griffin for either of us. It is. It seems. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. I think some people like the one with Playmaker as the protagonist. I just couldn't get into it. So I don't know if it got better as it went forward. I just I just like darker shows in general, and 5Ds was like so ludicrous. But it honestly had the best battles and character arcs of the entire show. Hands down. Minus, as I said before, I feel like the last last season kind of dropped the ball. I'm so disappointed. Get out of here, Sinos. I feel like when they were, whenever a show tries to emulate like GX, I feel like that those are the shows I don't end up watching. Like I, I really don't want to see them go to a dual academy. I really don't want every single show to be, and then we went to a dual academy. Darn you, Slifer Reds. Like, I'm so, I'm so over it, chat. I don't want to watch those. So I'll skip it if it's one of those. Laser with 45 hit, no special. That is so sad. Could have been good. Hmm... But yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely, uh, I really like 5Ds. Maybe, with, well, no, it would get copyrighted to hell, but maybe one day. <laughs> we'll listen to the 5D soundtrack when we don't mind the copyright. Which is phenomenal. I will give it this. I do think, even if I don't like the particular show for Yu-Gi-Oh! I do think the soundtracks are usually some of the best. They put a lot of money in those composers. Or it feels like it. They got their money's worth. This may be a more accurate statement. Now, I do think Classic Yu-Gi-Oh! does have some really good songs. Especially more Japanese version than English. But... Kind of one of those things. Yeah, Kai Kaiba as a character is so different between the English dub and the subtitles. It is kind of like watching a different show. I mean, 5, 5Ds has one of my favorite scenes of all time. I love that somebody legitimately, in the middle of a card game tournament, realize they're going to lose and say, screw it, and they decide to kamikaze their motorcycle <laughs> to try to kill the, one of the villains of the show. <laughs> or I guess I guess at that point, he was more kind of neutral, but yeah, he gets he changes a little over time. That was like one of the best scenes. <laughs> I love that there's so many things in 5Ds where they're like, wait, why are we dueling? <laughs> they just legit try to kill each other. I'm like, oh, 5Ds, you don't mess around. Ooh, a Ven Egg. Just kind of funny. Yeah, that is a shame about that laser, though. That could have been a really good laser. Charge laser would have been good. Hell, demon. There's quite a few things that could have been useful there. Uh, arrest. So, not even... I don't know if I would take Spirit, but Berserk Laser would also probably have been fine, honestly. 
Okay, this time I mag blast because I didn't fall as far behind. So yeah. We're gonna wait for the laser gate so I don't make people have to deal with those. There we go. We're gonna go on a happy little journey to check some boxes on the off chance that we get a decent hit item. I mean, in theory, we could do tower after this. I don't want to do it. Oh, not my hopes up. Just a Durandal. I don't care about that. I'm gonna say I'm not sure where he teleported there. Okay, thank you. I used uh, Dango there to determine where the enemy was. I'm like, okay, it has to be attacking Dango. Where is it? Yeah, I guess that's okay. Yeah, I feel like if you end up going for Parasitic Gene Flow as Blue ID, you end up getting decent Jaya's. Like, not necessarily top tier, but like enough that will probably carry you through the run. And that is kind of the thing. If you only have one character, it's kind of hard to get a good Jaya. When playing Phone Newman Blue ID, I've gotten so many Jayas at this point. And for people wondering, my best Jaya did come from very hard, no very hard mode and not ultimate. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Twins. Big damage time. I wonder if it's worth try- no, nah, it's probably not worth less spawning. I think I just need to normal, normal heavy. I think I'm missing my special too much on this. Let's go for consistent damage here. Yeah, like, I do think the original Yu-Gi-Oh! voice actors are iconic in English. It's hard for me to listen to the Japanese one, even if the story is better and not censored. Just for me, they're just such strong performances. It's just a shame about the rest of the show. Yeah, it's just like, I 100% agree. I think the Japanese version is generally better, start to finish, because again, they, it has more mature themes, less censorship, blah, blah, blah. Ooh. You can see my charge attack landed there. I went for it anyway. That almost killed. Just need like one hit. Yes. Thank you, last one. Yeah. I yeah, I could see that with DPC as well. I I didn't really grow up watching DPC, but I understand. Although I do like a uh, Norio Norio Nori Wakamoto as Cell. Love every time he does his shouts. Such a good villain voice actor. Oh, I missed. Oh, I only have an, oh that's right. I only have an eighty-three percent chance of hitting. So that's a perfect example where Red Ring would completely fix that. I was like, wait a minute, how did I miss that? Should have checked my percentage. I thought that's a 93 for some reason. So I am actually taking a gamble there every time I do that. And that time the gamble did not pay off. Anyway, last respective tomorrow. I'm like leaning over, checking, seeing if parasitic gene flow has appeared. If not, we still have some more opportunities later in the week. Nope. Take the diamond. Put away the Jaya, I guess. Okay, so let's do maybe two TTF at most. We'll see. Yeah, I'll probably play as Ralmar. Just to go for raw damage. 
I don't really feel like doing Viridian at the moment. We got three eggs, two photon drops, the shell, not bad. Some of these items back. I slowly gotta put my eggs away because they've just been holding them on a character. Oh, I max defense material too. Ooh, that's awkward. Well, on the plus side, that means I'm at 99 on a couple different things. Back up to 43 photon drops out of 37, I think I had. I think I got six PDs today, between stuff I was holding and other things. Not bad. Hand in the quest, get a little bit of cash. I love him at 313 Masetta. I love that I gained enough Masetta that I basically went positive even with Jaya usage. That's kind of funny to me. Hmm. Oh my gosh, we're at 21 out of 163 songs. Holy. Oh boy, Chad, that, that could be our whole stream. It could just be this one game. <laughs> I just I was just curious where we were in the soundtrack. We are not even remotely close. That is actual insanity. We're listening to curling ultimate alternate version, excuse me. Ooh, look at that rare rate with the Raw Mar. It's kind of nice. Ooh, 196 for Newman. Nice, nice. I was gonna say, this character is so busted, I don't even need hit percentage on Excalibur. <laughs> if I had an AB6 Excalibur, it'd be so unfair here. One minute, no problem. I'll just do Angry Stomp. Yeah, I'm thinking this will be my, like, my two Psycho Wand chances, technically. To say that we still technically go for Psycho Wand every stream, every time we play green or red ID and kill the uh, two sorcerers. Green ID also gets V101, which is nice. Double checking if there's anything else of interest. Spread Needle from Merlins, I guess is okay, but we're not likely to kill them. The Heavenly Arm chance from Indie Belra is kind of nice. So we're not super, super likely to get it, but it could happen every now and then. Getting spares of those is always nice. That is an insane rare rate. I guess if we play tomorrow, we might do a little more RBR while it's still in rotation. But honestly, I'm happy we, uh, we've been mixing it up a bit. I don't think this weekend we'll have a lot of PSO, so it'll be a bit more subdued, I think, in terms of, uplo in terms of uploads, but we'll see. I got a lot of plans. I'm still contemplating if I'm going to end up streaming at all during my vacation, which will be at the end of April. Or if I'll still do like 7.30 streams for it versus like 5 or 6 p.m. streams. I'll think about it. Can of Rouge time. Goodbye, Soul Dragon. Yeah, 
honestly been a pretty good day for XP. I think basically every quest has given us like 160,000 plus XP. And has usually been at least 120 XP a second. RT being the thing not giving the greatest per se. Which is kind of funny because that is one of the leveling quests potentially. Soul Animizer, I'll pick that up. Nice re -nof. I think that was mentioned on the YouTube comments. That's a d If you get a high enough hit percentage, I think that is decent against Worm. Just that we usually prefer things like Excalibur for sure. Oh, oops. Chat was already there. Checks out. Hmm... I guess I can afford to stay back and kill these things. As long as somebody gets to the next room, that's all that matters. Oh, I actually got a Mill Lily? Seriously? Where were you doing Rare Enemy Week? Right, chat? Whatever. I just feel salty at that. I don't even feel happy. <laughs> I even remember what he drops. Probably like Heavenly Power or something. Not something I really need. Oh, DB Saber? Seriously? That's what it drops? That's so sad. It's not even a good rare. Come on. Anyway, we'll take the warp that somebody used. There we go. I'm just shaking my head, rolling my eyes. Like, here's all this time I was trying to go for, like, the, the Lily Rares and Slime Rares. Gives it to us on green ID. There's literally nothing. At least give us Hildator or something if you give us a rare. You'd be safer for tribute. That's fair. Goodbye, D Rolling. See, so, yeah, I guess I can hold back here. Dragon Ball Saver, something like that. There should be in the corner of the raft. Yeah. Sadly, though, no items worth picking up. Yeah, I don't have traps, so I'm just gonna go in. So, if I keep walking to the point that he falls, I know I'm gonna be outside of the laser distance. That'll be GG for him. Nice photon drop. I was gonna say, Dango has... <laughs> Dango and Orin have quite the uh, emotes. A plethora of options. There we go, eliminated that thing real quick. Yeah, with that, if we have a force, it doesn't matter as much versus the casts. I guess I could stay behind and potentially kill the Barans. I don't think. As long as one ranger goes through and shortcuts to kill the thing, it doesn't really matter who does it. I'm probably needed more for spread needle damage, if I had to guess. So we got an okay chance of V101 here. I've gotten basically all of them from just grinding TTF, so it's like I don't usually quote-unquote hunt for V101, it just kind of happens if you play TTF. I think that's why I have like 7 V101s and about 6 red rings or something. I have a lot of red rings. It's just from doing this quest, because I do like green, viridian, red, playing a variety of those just for them. So like here, Dango will move forward, for example. He'll clear out the room. Or not Dango, excuse me, and Parameter will. We'll clean this up with Dango. And that way, he got a clean shot at the switch, and we just kind of move around the other enemies. Well, the Chief Yaps have that, I've only seen two Vino once. Oh, that's unfortunate. I got pretty good luck with it, I guess. I get them about as often as Red Rings.
I think I've gotten 1v101 from Green ID episode 4. I think I've had literally one V801 drop out of many years of playing. So sad. Charge arm time. Catching up to you. Yeah, I, I ended up getting quite a few. Because I think I have three in the share bank and three are equipped, if I remember correctly. Because Fomoral has it, Ramoral and Ramar have it, and I still have three left over. Oh, and then Viridia has it. So maybe, maybe, I, maybe I am at seven now. The other one. Well, time drop. Nice. Uh, I'll go for the no freeze trap strat. Let's see if this works. Oh, it's like a little shy of combo kill. Okay, that'll work in single player for sure. So I used the corner as kind of to describe why I went that way. I used the corner to line up against the Darkbringer. So there's not really any RNG. I know he's going to walk towards me in a very specific way. So I know I can blindly turn even without looking at the radar where he is. Unless somebody does something crazy and pulls him. It should work every time. But yeah, Tiggy. Lots of red rings. It's probably because this is the quest I play the most. Like, chat only see- like, I- I do play it every stream, more or less, but, like, that does not hit the total number of TTF that I do. Like, even today, I think I did four TTF off stream. So just think about it, even on non-stream days, I'm probably doing two, three TTFs a day. So I could probably just have an entire stream of it if I really wanted to. I do like the quest. I like optimizing little bits of it. To see where I can get better movement or what weapons I can get away with. Testing things on Worm. Trying to exploit falls patterns. I still haven't quite figured out how to dodge the uh, bouncing lasers. Because they do reorient every time. It isn't like they just go towards you once with the homing laser and then zigzag. Like they will reorient if I zigzag. So I'm not sure what the true strategy is to get 100% dodge there. I might go look up videos later. I did last so long in dodging it that I did dodge the Grant's attack. That's about my best so far. I have never dodged them. Like, what movement are you doing, Tiggy, to dodge them out of curiosity? I should have been looking at uh, this, the radar instead of looking at chat there. My bad. It's not just like in a straight line, right? Like you have to kind of curve around the arena, but do you do anything else to kind of juke them? Like you do like a, a tricky left, right in the beginning. Do you have to go a very specific angle? Because I've tried going around the arena and I'll go like halfway, almost halfway around the arena and they still get me. Mostly straight, interesting. I might go for it here if they target me. Yeah, because usually they get me on the reorient, so like maybe I'm doing too sharp of an angle. I just want to see what I'm physically doing wrong. Get a couple pot shots there, heal our HP. Get rewarded for not moving. Get hugely rewarded for not moving. Holy, the reward? The reward for not moving? <laughs> wow, I was in the perfect position for that, that was sick. I even got the Berserk shots on Heaven Striker. Fully rewarded. Could not have gone better, honestly, for me. What a position. Uh oh. Where's my healing item? There we go. <laughs> I was thinking about what menu it was. It's like, never mind, other one. Bowie time. There we go. That was good. I just love all of our little teeny foeys going out. <laughs> just like, eh. <laughs> Take that, falls. Eh, that was fast enough. I'll do one more. The 
50,000 XP, not bad. And again, another quest with like 170, 180 XP a second. It's pretty solid. 40 hit Vulcans, no special. Chat, shake your head. Come on. All these are like so close to being usable. It's so sad. So many grinders and stuff on them. Principal's never impressed. We're just forever a big disappointment to him. Oh, I see Tiggy and Log B. Okay. Last CTF for me, I think. Sort our inventory, get our grinders out of the way. Oh, Tiggy's here. Sure, we could do a game with Tiggy. Thank you for joining us in Parameter. Ooh, stretch. <laughs> Let's see if we could get Tiggy and Dango Red Ring. I, I want to see the elusive. Can you imagine if we had a run where all four players got Red Ring? <laughs> the banner would never stop. I want to see a chat. The true endgame goal. Goodbye, random enemies. Grab that little bit of mess as I walk by. I'm like, look, I could go money positive if I believe. Yeah, I think I was mentioning that, I think, on the YouTube as well. I feel like most quests I generally go very money neutral on. I think the only time I ever really lose money is if I use Jaya. So I try not to use Jaya more than like three swings if I'm looking to go money neutral. But otherwise, even this character using charge arm the majority of the time. Super good. <laughs> Poor Tiggy. He's like, no, I will dark flow. Well, oh, the boss is already dead. Wow, Tiggy with the timing on that. I think it was you. It definitely wasn't me. So yeah, there is like a brief phase when the boss straightens up that if you do damage in that little window, it will just kill the boss instantly. Sadly, you still gotta wait for it to roar, even though it's already dead. But yeah, that was another instance where 100% that boss was dead. We didn't have to do anything. Poor Tiggy. Can never escape the trolling with Dark Flow. I swear, if I get like another rare Lily, I'm gonna lose my mind. Get rid of you. Oh, if you want Tiggy, you could dupe the uh, slimes for more badges. We got some time to wait anyway. Defense material. I'll stay behind. I believe in you, Tiggy. Believe in the dupe. Just remember, three melee swings or gunshots into the fire traps. Let them spawn. Yeah, we got some time. Oh, chat's duplicating with uh, Ice Rivarda, I think. Ah. Uh, never mind, we're good. Now you just gotta kill them. Because <laughs> these are a lot of potential badges. Spam that fire trap. Oh, 
Oh, you left him alive? Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm gonna kill a couple. There we go. Good enough. I'm gonna heal while Tiggy's not here. <laughs> the secret tech. I lure Tiggy out of the way, then I can rest him. Yeah, that, that's so many badge opportunities. It's actually a good XP per second, too, which is really funny to me. Like, it obviously slows down getting Red Ring, but, like, in terms of XP, it's very silly. Obviously, Tiggy doesn't care about the XP, but those badge chances are real. Oh, I'm so dead, aren't I? Oh, didn't get targeted. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I was worried there. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the end of the raft. Who did that? It wasn't me. I went out of my way to d die mate there. I'm assuming it was post fight you got healed. If I did rest, uh, that was a muscle reflex, but I'm pretty sure I popped the die mate. <laughs> I walked away from Tiggy and everything, so I was like, hold on, I got a menu. <laughs> this is not a game, oh no. See if I see if I rest you, Tiggy, I'll let you know and then I'll laugh. <laughs> it would have it would have been on purpose. <laughs> oh, just adjust C. That's unfortunate. Bad drops here. Oh well. Stupid just see there. I guess I could go back and shoot a couple of these just for badges. I'm waiting anyway. It's better than nothing there. Not like the team needs me to kill that. Yeah, again, those are things you don't normally do outside of events, but it's like, if you see a free opportunity to grab some badges, and it's not really going to slow down the team at all, that's fine. Like, our shotgun is definitely useful here, so we'll make sure at least for this wave we should be here. Everything else is a bit more questionable, whether we need to be there. Tiggy is also kind of the god at destroying these Barans, so I'm not really going to be too worried about them. Oh, there's a V101. See what I mean? I I have good luck with them. Oh, oh, they're so dead. R rip these Barans. Like, they're, they're actually dead. Uh, I'm just going to try to go for the, the shot here. Uh. Tiki just kills them so fast. Hugh Cass is so unfair. What a character. I shake my head every time. There we go. Congrats on the V101. Nice little upgrade for the character if you're using Heavenly Battle. See what happens when you don't heal me, says Tiggy. See, we're hurting we're we're choosing to damage Tiggy's uh emotional health bar to make sure it's as low as the physical HP. <laughs> Goodbye, Vault Op. Careful, it's a double screen. Oh, I still got hit. I tried. I even berserked. That's how much I tried to save Tiggy's health total. I used the berserk. I was willing to die for that. There we go. Anyway, back to charge arm. Nice. Okay, I should be able to survive most things. Should be good here. <laughs> She's dead so fast. So bad. Ooh, nice material drops. Yeah, I always like to pop extra boxes, even if we have a force. Because I know that if we just leave it to the force, there'll be one... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, uh, <laughs> Chaos Rider, whatever your name is. Darkbringer. I forget which version we're fighting. You died instantly to Tiki. There's nothing fair about it. Tiki just kind of looked at you and went, no. 
Once you're in the Hughcast sites, it's over. I don't like that sorcerer. That that sorcerer is not gonna make it. Kill a couple of these so the team can get by. I'm gonna kill a couple more of these because I got nothing better to do. There we go. Team will be fighting the Indie Bellras now. Let's go assist. As long as I don't line up with the team, we should be good. I think you're just mercilessly murdering them. I got you, Diggy. Okay, and then since I'm the first one here, I'm gonna Ryuker. That way we can all be grouped. I will safety die, mate. Diggy's probably gonna spin and lose HP. There's the Garrisol. Is that a monolith? It is a monolith. There we go. So yeah, we're gonna leave our Heaven Striker on. So if we have like truly endgame Heaven Striker, if we have like a 40 hit, like 50 plus dark, we would just be berserking all day long and doing completely broken damage to the boss. But sadly, I'm just using, I think, a 25 dark with no hit, so I can't land my specials very often multiplayer. I can land them decently well in single player, because Ramar is privileged like that. Nice, I like the Kofoe Strat. Goodbye, balls. Jeez. I swear I blinked. That boss went from 8,000 to 600. <laughs> it's like, there wasn't, it wasn't like a gradual decline. It just went, I had health. I no longer had health. There was no in between state. No safety die made here. I don't trust myself to not get hit here. Oh, nice. It's doing what I want. Oh, I tried resting, but the slow-mo stopped it from casting. Oh well. That would have let me potentially berserk once safely. I don't feel like burning another dime eight, because I don't want to go back and chomp. Ooh, I got the crit. Wow, boss is at half HP. Love to see it. Come on, Fireball. Oh, so close. It almost got Shame killed by Foey. It's so close. Come on, Shame, kill. Shame, kill. Okay, so it'll be targetable here. So if Tiki doesn't get knocked down, this is GG. Yeah, it's GG. Get out of here. Or I'll shoot it. That's fine. Pow, pow. I like Tiki's character, just never impressed. Arms crossed, like, mm. I'm just always looking away. <laughs> just, it's like, <laughs> Dango flexing on the enemy, Arn waving hello. I'm just like, no. I'm brooding. I'll never see it. Put the boxes. Oh, okay, he can't stand up against it? I wasn't sure. Oh. Uh. You know what, just for Tiggy, we'll do one more. We got a V101. If nothing else, this will just be XP for the rest of the team. Dango at 185. Nothing too crazy drop-wise from normal common weapons, I mean. Okay. For sure, the last one. Perfect.
See, we're in the Mario side of the soundtrack. Sixty hit is required to land last two berserk shots. Interesting. For Ramar, it's still that high. Oh, I guess it is multiplayer though. Multiplayer evasion's weird. How much in single player though? I thought it was around forty, but it could be mistaken. Yeah, I was doing some calculations the other day, comparing against Worm Boss. A couple of different things. So I try not to speak off the cuff. I, I do try to look up the numbers every now and then. Yeah, I think... I forget what the evasion difference is between the forums. I want to say generally it goes up by the third one. So it's a little harder. I'm looking at least to land, like, heavy, heavy special consistently. But heavy special special would be sick. Hey, because this successfully wasted all your luck. all. Oh. Oh, I went- oh, it died, it died. <laughs> Tiki got it. Maybe I'm doing it too early. Maybe I have to delay it more like Tiki did. Where it looks like it shouldn't be targetable, but it takes the damage anyway. Take the power material. Yeah, we'll let Tiggy do a mad dash for the slimes. He doesn't even have to clear the other room. We'll be fine. Oops. My aiming is not fine, though. That's how I can tell I'm tired, when I aim like that. Precision down. And then I'll just clean out this room so the team doesn't have to worry about it. Potentially, we'll get badges out of this. Kill you. Fifty percent is still okay. Okay. That doesn't shoot too far off for single player. Multiplayer is definitely higher than I thought for sure. Oh, Tiggy's still here. I got you, Tiggy. You're fine. Go kill some slimes. Enjoy yourself, Tiggy. Be free. <laughs> Let this be my prison. There we go. I just figure because I'm going to be here anyway. Uh, guess I could take a warp. There we go. Oh, no badges dropped. That's unfortunate. I'm mostly just looking for a cannon rouge with 15 hit for multiplayer, just so I could use it with this character and be lazy. Because he only has a 90% chance of landing the heavy attack. It's so sad. Like, but what if 15%? Oh, forgot to walk. Uh, walk part of the way at least. Holy Ray. It came with any hit, that would be nice. It's unlikely though. I feel like I've never seen that drop hit percentage for me there. It's so sad. Oh, I got... I was slightly too close. 
If I had taken one less step, I would have killed. But I got interrupted instead. Oh well. Uh, I think I'm just gonna kill these just because we got some time anyway. And again, as long as the other team members go there, we're fine. Just kind of extra item chances for us. There we go. Okay, now I gotta start going since it's been a little bit. Yeah, as long as, as long as we're there at the important moment, that's all that matters. So we could get just a couple little sneaky event egg chances or PDs. Is that I don't care about the rare of that enemy for sure. It's more just the raw number of kills. Technically also materials. But I'm I'm more looking for event and PD. Goodbye, Sinnoh Blue. Perish. Uh, I should probably just bring out my Cannon Rouge and let Tiki kill everything. I think that'll be the goal here. Yeah, like, we'll just assume the one in the middle will die, and then we just kind of come over here. Take a little nice little pot shot, and then we just move on. Tiki damage too high. Protect Tiggy. I do that I do find that really funny though that Tiggy like as he casts with all that HP and defense, he's usually the glass cannon. Just seeing how Dark Flow works. It's like Phonuman will go, I will face tank for you. Why does that Chow look angry? I've never seen that before. That's kind of funny. It had the angry face. The Chow's going in. Careful, it's a two monitor cycle. Be prepared to kill the turrets. Ooh, that went real good. Hit a couple. <laughs> you could just one shotting the turret. Goodbye. Holy, the damage. There we go. Charge arm time. Yeah, I think that's why, like, if I keep playing, it'll be a lot of episode 4 late game, I have a feeling. Just trying to get Cannon Rouges and Heaven Strikers. Potentially both in one run. Uh... I pick up the defense material. I can pick up the HP, though. So, yeah, like, we're, you know, we spent 5,000 so far, and Charge Arm has been our majority damage item. But usually if you're like with a well-equipped team, you really won't use that much Masetta in general. Well, a couple of these because we're waiting. Okay. Oh, team was scaring me for a second. I was like, wait a minute, am I, am I about to get me get it? Well done, drop. Nice. Definitely picking that up. Worth it. Come on, Heavenly Arms for the team. It'd be nice. Or Cycle 1. We'll take Cycle 1 if you're not going to give Heavenly Arm, right, chat? Oh, we're out of here. We're out of here. <laughs> I was like, do not want. Might as well just kill a couple. Rip my die, mate. You served your cause. Tiggy with the Master Raven. I gotta get one of those. That's one of those ones. I think I'll just pay PDs for it. If someone picks one up, I'll, I'll pay for just one, though. <clears throat> well, maybe two. So then again, my Hugh Cast and Hugh Mark could probably benefit from it. Uh oh, server announcement. Very warm happy birthday to one of our resident warriors. 
Wolfies. Hmm. Rip Tiggy. Well, that was nice of them to give a happy birthday shout out. Should move a little closer to the boss. Let's skip the fight ending over here, maybe. Send it like here. I miscounted by one. That could have been bad. I've been trying to pay attention to the mini map to see who's killing what. So, generally, if we full clear, I think it's two after we're done. This boss is so dead. Yeah, like about 109% with this weapon. I'm curious what the next phase is. I'm mostly curious about that. So 130, 109. How about on this phase? What have we got? Oh, still 130, 109. Interesting. I'm gonna try mate here. Oh no. Tiggy got dropped. No. Rip Tiggy. And the music died. Tiggy took the music with him. We'll fix that in a second. Good music, though. Oh, I thought somebody was berserking with me. Oh, that was so risky. Oh, no. Well, 4 HP. That's fine. Because I, I definitely hard committed there. I'm surprised I didn't die. Okay, let's fix the music. Rip Tiki. I'm assuming his internet dropped because I didn't see any comments in the Twitch chat. Yeah, there we go. GG. Rip Tiki. This one's for you, Tiki. Blue Dana says why. Blue Dana is always confused. I'm not convinced Blue Dana knows what's going on. There we go. Take that soul link. GG. Tiggy's with, with us there in spirit. Pop. No rare, sadly. Well, this is a good place to end for sure. Guess I can restock my items since I'm here. sure to check those boxes on the low off chance that those are actually usable weapons. So far I feel like most of those drops have been trolls. So thank you everybody that played tonight. No worries. See you around, Tiggy. It's a good combo of things. So if I put away all but one egg... Oh, I only have one egg. So if I don't put away any eggs, how many are in the bank currently? From zero. Catch an 18. 22. Alright, so we still have a bunch on a whole... On a few other characters. So I think I'm at around 26 or 27. That's not bad. Also, I should put away some of these PDs. I like holding one, so that way I don't have to keep replacing it. That should be good. So we went up about 10 PDs, I think, across my other characters. But again, some of that might have been from the last session. 
where I wasn't able to deposit them. Yeah, I think that went well. Let's get our money. See, we're at like negative 7,000. We're gonna go get, get some money. The realm are going money positive. There we go. So let's quit and chat. We're getting through the Olympic soundtracks, but in terms of rares, we got V101 tonight. That's pretty good. We saw a couple Jaya's drop. They were kind of mediocre. We did get Cannon Rouges. That's a plus side. And I think we did get to show off most of what we do in Ultimate Episode 4. Not necessarily every quest possible, but enough that you would get the idea of what to do during Rare Weeks going forward. I think that's fair. And again, there's some quests that are more suited for Rare Enemy, like Pod, for example. Unless you're just going for Dragon Scale, which is why I thought it was worth showing off. Uh, but I think otherwise... Yeah, tons of XP. I think it's all Dango level twice in a stream. So that's how you know the XP is high. When somebody's 180 plus and they keep leveling, that's good XP. But anyway, I think that's all for now. So let's go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. So if you did watch at this point in the video or the VOD, I'd just like to say thank you for watching. Hope to see you again next time.